Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick a Side podcast. My name is Joel Moran and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, and JC. And this is now episode 358. In this episode, we're going to debate which West teams in the playing will miss the playoffs. The team with the biggest chance of being upset in the first round in the Western Conference. If anyone can stop the Celtics and more. As you guys see here right now, Dells is on vacation. He went to Florida. He'll be back next week. So JC is filling in. JC, how you doing, man? Return of a legend. <laughs> I'm doing good, fellas. You know, I'm here filling in for my boy Dells, holding it down for a little bit. But I'm ready to talk hoops and I'm ready to get this this show started. So how do you feel about the Brooklyn Nets? This is not going to be a topic oh, on the show. Off rip. <laughs> off rip. But I, I know I know that... This is a topic to get you in your bag. Yes, you the you audience know. knows you as a Nets fan. So how do you feel about the Nets and, and what they're doing right now? Oh, man. If anybody follows me on Twitter, any Nets fans, if you are watching and you do follow me, you know how upset I've been with the direction of this team. Um, this is the first time I, as a fan... That I don't really even watch the games anymore. That's like I tragic. sat through a twelve and seventy season, and I watched that this season for whatever reason. I feel like we have the talent to at least be a lock playing team, but we're not playing well. And I think a lot of um, our issues obviously stem from Sean Marks. I think Sean Marks is the biggest issue here in Brooklyn. I mean, we're talking about a guy who has been here since I believe twenty seventeen. You know, I give him his credit. He did t- take on arguably one of the worst positions a GM could ever take on in basketball history with the Nets, uh, being with that Boston trade, that Billy King, who's even worse than Sean Marks uh, facilitated. But um, if we look back at it, like Sean Marks has been through four head coaches already. Uh, uh, First was Kenny Atkinson, Kyrie, Kevin Durant came, fired them. After that, it was Steve Nash. Everybody here knows how horrible Steve Nash was. Jock Vaughn intermed. Um, Then he ended up getting a four-year contract. He's gone after a year. So He's, he's getting paid to, through 2027. He's gone. And then Kevin Ali, I mean, he's arguably, he's not going to be the answer for the Nets. The Nets have already stated that uh, they want to look for a coach that has, that you know, that's that that's a veteran in the league. So that's the, you know, that's the direction we're going in. But just everything from the, the James Harden trades coming back to bite us. I know a lot of fans were adamant that that trade wasn't going to work. Harden even ended up staying a year with us. And on top of that, it was a domino effect. Kyrie wanted out. Kevin Durant wanted out. And, we're stuck with, we're, 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 we don't have anything. We don't control our own picks. Uh, we have Phoenix's picks, but they're going to be good. And it's just, I don't know, like, we traded three superstars and we didn't even get a young, promising all-star player in return. Like, to me, that's crazy. You had three first ballot Hall of Famers on your team, and the best piece you walked away with was Macau Bridges, who's in his prime Fire. now and is probably not going to get any better. Oh. On top of that, we employ Ben Simmons, who barely plays any games nowadays, it seems like he is always hurt. When he's on the court, he's and a difference maker. He's, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, dude, I mean, he's far removed from his Philly days. I mean, he doesn't even look at the rim anymore. Like he's lost all confidence. So, like, I mean, I think the the root of all these problems in Brooklyn, you have to say, is Sean Marks, and I don't know what he's done to be given this leash. If per se, you know what I mean? Like, he's not like a Bob Myers with championship pedigree. He doesn't have anything to his name. If anything, he's put the Nets in the worst position in the NBA. You're boring. You don't have any players that excite. The ratings have went down 40%. You don't control your own pick. The Nets are the worst team in the NBA right now, like, position-wise. Maybe not record-wise, but position-wise. Never so thought, bad, I don't watch Never them. thought I would be here defending the Nets. Never a day in my life. <laughs> However, Sean Marks, you said it. Took on one of the most difficult GM jobs Hardly in ever. the NBA after Boston fleeced the shit out of you. Somehow, some way, with a bunch of mediocre draft picks, you guys were able to bring in Spencer Dimwitty, bring in Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Claxton, and you were able to intrigue in- 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 Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant to want to come play with you guys. Worst mistake ever. I give Sean Marks a little bit of leeway here because he built something from absolutely zero. You guys were one of the worst teams in league history. And Sean Marks was actually able to make you guys decent enough to intrigue two of the best free agents ever to come to your city. 
So I kind of give him some leeway there. He also, maybe you could say, hey, it was a mistake. He kind of bit off more than he could chew. He, he tried to rush things by trading for Harden. That's fine. But you had Harden, you had KD, you had Kyrie. In theory, it was supposed to work, JC. Supposed to. Damn. It was supposed to work. Now we're all just left yeah. here ringless. Now we all hate Sean Marks, allegedly. The Nets are a depressing team. Before we get into the topic list on the show, which is going to be a doozy, it's going to be a great one. A quick word from our sponsor, Prize Picks. It's in the top right corner right there. Use code PAS. You get a deposit match up to $100. And fellas, Prize Picks is so easy to use. It's so easy to create entries, to make your plays, and get some wins. What do you, lo- what do you love about Prize Picks, Drew? To me, you, I mean, you just said it. 100% the truth, how simple it is, how easy it is to use. Just the squares being as as simple as they are, as as organized as the app is. To me, I, I mean, that's what it is. And it comes down to how simple it is to get your plays off to, how easy it is to understand, oh, if I want to put X amount, how much am I going to get back in return with this play? So that's what I love about it. It's very it's very simple, simplified for, for guys that don't really go too in-depth on, on sports betting like that. For me, it's just the versatility. I mean, like, <clears throat> excuse me, what I told Drew in the football season, like the plays they had for kickers kicking a field goal, you know how it goes from that to receiving yards to rushing yards. Like, it's just so versatile. It's one of my favorite apps out there. Yeah, it's very easy to use. has an easy interface, and it's accessible to a lot of people. If you go to the App Store, you type in Prospects, you can download it. It's available in over 30 states. It's the best DFS app available Right now, make sure you guys download Prospects and use code PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. The Celtics last night had a dominant performance against the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, beat the Mavericks. <clears throat> yeah, you know, listen, they played the third game in four nights. You know, I, I give them some leeway. I give Dallas some leeway. Kyrie Irving ain't I show hate up. Dallas for making that a thing now. What? Just giving teams that leeway play the third the night. Yeah, I hate him so much. It was a dominant performance, and I feel like at this point in the season, uh, we look at the Celtics, we look at their record, and we know how great they are, but there always is some hesitancy with propping them up and saying, you know what, this is going to be the team that's going to win the championship this year because maybe there's something about them that you don't fully trust. So with this topic, we're going to try to answer that question uh, and see where we all land on the Celtics. And that's, can anybody stop the Boston Celtics, whether that's in the East, whether that's in the Western Conference? Uh, Drew, I'll start with you. It's funny that we're doing this topic, the, the episode that Dells is not here. And I respect that. Generational <laughs> hate. However, uh, is there a team that can stop the Boston Celtics? If we're going to break it down by conference, there's no team that can stop the Boston Celtics in the East. The only one that's kind of had some kind of competition versus them is the Miami Heat. I think you put that in our group chat. The only one that can stop them, Jimmy Buckets, this, this, that, and the third. But again, that's a different Heat team. We understand that when they go into the playoffs, they are a different team. And right now, they may not be one of the more aggressive, more more confident teams you feel like in the Eastern Conference. But you understand, come playoff time, you have to respect them. Uh, But right now, it's seeming as if we're looking at the Boston Celtics as the one. Uh, if you just want to go based off offense, we're talking about the best offense in the NBA. We're going to go back defense. We're talking about the second best defense in the NBA. Number one in offensive rating by far. One of the better three-point shooting teams. You're looking at a, a superstar in Jason Tatum. They meet that criteria. They have a superstar. Uh, you have one of the best Robins in basketball in Jalen Brown, who has realized now with Christos Porzingis, I can get back to playing elite level defense. He's also worked on his playmaking a little bit, and they say, oh, he can't go left. Throw that away. The advanced numbers go, and they back him up in that regard guard too but Christos Porzingis this is the x factor if Christos Porzingis you hear this every time somebody talks about the Boston Celtics and their chances of winning an NBA championship if they're 100% healthy there is no team that can hang with the Boston Celtics they are a near perfect roster they take every box and they check it off I disagree um I think what don't they do no I disagree on if they're 100% healthy nobody can beat them I think in the east 100% 100% yes. sound. I think Correct. there's nobody in the East, unfortunately, that could maybe, like, I'm looking at their losses. I mean, Milwaukee beat them. You know, you can throw that around, but then they lost to Indiana. So they got a lot of trolling L's in this this whole 12-loss season. Um, I think Milwaukee, you know, if you just, you're praying on Dame and Giannis to go nuclear, which they can, you know, that would be a series that would give them fits. If you think Miami, you know, because they've been the boogeyman, they've been the thorn in the Celtic side for all these years, but this is just, like, uh, 
Drew mentioned, this is just feels like a different team. You know, Joe Mazzulla feels like he's got better. Tatum Brown, they got that high, uh, they got that post player now down low, a guy who can anchor the rim. Robert Williams was a great defender for them, but the problem with him was he could not produce a good enough offense. He wasn't an offensive player. Now you bring in Porzingis, who's just as good defensively and offensively, just clears him. Now you bring a different dynamic. Then you bring in Drew Holiday, who can still give you that elite defense, doesn't have to do too much on offense. Suddenly he's this elite three-point shooter. Yeah, in the corner. He's getting a lot of looks. Yeah. you know. So um, And then you got Derek White. So I think in the East, yes, there's nobody in the East that can beat them. In the West, I think... I would give them. Two, I, I would say two teams. I think Minnesota. You can think about it, but all, no, I'm not saying them. No, That's no. the team that no, 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 comes no. first. I'm not no, saying them. No, I'm saying Minnesota. You know, if you watch both of their matchups, it looked fun. It looked exciting. They went toe to toe. But I think offensively, they got a lot, a lot of work to do. Defensively, I think they do match up well with the Celtics. I think defensively, they can give them some. Uh, they can give them fits. But I just don't think their offense is consistent enough to keep up with the Celtics. I think. If I'm, if you ask me who can beat them, I think Denver or the Clippers. I think those would be the two teams I think that can match up with the Celtics and beat them. Because if you think about for the Clippers, star power, the Clippers got it just like Boston. Offense, the Clippers got it just like uh, Boston. Defensively, the Clippers can get into it just like Boston. They have the coach, you know, they have the star in Kawhi just like Boston has the star in Tatum. So if you got if you got a team, you know, and and the Clippers have been struggling as of late defensively to get it to it, especially in February, you know. So you expect that. Playoff time is going to come up soon in March, in, the fourth. In, in April for sure. I mean, you guys aren't good, though. You're a playing team. But nonetheless. Losing to a playing team is embarrassing. Boston man. lost to the Austin Reeves. And D'Lo. Yeah. Never forget. Um, but yeah, if you're talking about a team that, that has that type of makeup, that type of, you know, that type of team to just go up against the Boston Celtics and beat them, I think Denver also provides. Because Porzingis is a great pickup, but it's just no answer for the Joker right now in this league. I do think Jamal Murray's. It, that's a tough series for him because you know you got a bunch of six 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 seven guys who can defend you well. You can't find a mismatch in that lineup. But I'm looking at the Clippers, a team with Harden, Paul George, Kawhi. They can go small. They can go a little bit big. I think they match up pretty well with the Celtics. So I would go with those two teams. JC, do you agree with the Clippers and the Nuggets? I definitely agree with the Clippers and the Nuggets. Uh, I do believe the uh, the Nuggets have an opportunity to uh, two peat as far as the Clippers. I mean, everything he said was spot on. They have the star power. They have the coaching. They have the shot makers. They have the playmakers. They have the, they have a solid center who can rebound. They have all the makings of a team that can go all the, like go all the way and, you know, compete with Boston. But in the East, I want to shine some light on maybe one team that can maybe pose a threat. Now I'm not saying they can beat them because I have Boston winning. I have Boston coming out of the East, but a team that I feel like can give Boston some struggles is the Miami heat. Um, Miami Heat, they're a top 10, they're a top 10 defense, they're top 10 in three-point shooting. They're starting to turn it on the last uh, 12 or so odd games. So um, they, they have a good opportunity to make it to the four seed, have an easier path to, you know, instead of going out the plan like last year, they have more scoring surrounding Jimmy Butler. And this time, it looks like it's going to happen, but we don't know it's 27 games, but they can be relatively healthy going into the playoffs. A lot of the problems last year with Miami was scoring. I feel like Tyler Hero, I feel like Hawkins, I feel like all these guys – implemented together can help Jimmy Butler with the scoring load. I believe Eric Spolcher is the best coach in the NBA. I believe, I mean, even in the last ECF, even though it almost blew a 3-0 lead, he was coaching circles around Missoula. Um, and then if we just look at history, I mean, Boston, Miami, seven games. Miami goes to the finals. The year before, seven games. Boston goes to the finals. These, like, Miami, for whatever reason, poses the biggest threat. I do think that the Celtics would would win. If I had to, like, you know, give it a prediction, I'd probably say six games. But I could see a world where Miami really could upset them. And, I mean, I'm just basing off history right now and, and more improved Miami team offensively. I think that this is the team that can pose the biggest threat to the Celtics. Obviously, what Riv said about Milwaukee is true. The only way Milwaukee has a chance is if Damian Lillard and Giannis go nuclear. But I feel like the supporting cast around them isn't good, and I feel like they aren't a better all-around team than Miami, in my opinion. And I'm a fan of the Celtics and what they've built. And what they've built, Drew. Don't don't suck your teeth at me. The shit gets old, man. This is how you started off. Every crazy. time. The Celtics, from a roster standpoint, is one of the best-built rosters in the last 10 years. If I were to rank them, you got the 2017-2019 Warriors to that point. The KD Warriors. We could just classify like that as number one. Number two, 
I mean, that I think is a toss up because you have the 2019 Raptors with Kawhi. You look at that team top to bottom. All of those players eventually ascended into better players than what they were that year in their role. But at the time, Fred Van Vliet, bench player, Norman Powell was a role player still. Pascal Siakam was a most improved player, but he wasn't an all-star just yet. Ibaka, Gasol, it's a great team. Is that team better than this current iteration deeper, of the Celtics? Better. Deeper, yeah. I could can, I can level with you. The Spurs get slept on. The 2015-2017 Spurs with LaMarcus Aldridge and Kawhi Leonard. I mean, that team gets heavily slept on, and they should be up here too. That team is one of the best-built teams in the last 10 years. You got the bubble Lakers, the 2020 Lakers. I was going to say 2016 NBA, uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. Yes, can't to forget about there. the 2018 Rockets. Yep. They didn't win a championship, though. But if you go down the list... What is this? What what is this station giving me? <laughs> no, JC, it's JC, bro. He started laughing. That's why I laughed. You would put the 2016 Cavs up here? Yeah, they beat the best team ever. I think they went have to. No, no, I, I think I, they went I, nuclear, but from yeah. a roster standpoint, we're talking about like built roster. I don't think they would go up with these two. I think they went nuclear. Yeah. But I wouldn't like built roster. That's why. I, that's why. I, I don't know, I man. Like, I don't know. You, we, we had some pretty. Team, yeah, OD. We had some pretty great. Players on that squad: Kyrie, Jr., LeBron, obviously. Cool. Tristan, Tristan Thompson, Thompson was Tristan good. Thompson was very good. It was good. a good he roster. I don't know Shumper. if it was Shumper. great though. I just think LeBron Tyron and Kyrie. Were LeBron, in the Kyrie, Kevin Love. If it won a championship, it's a great roster. I'm okay. not gonna lie though; he's ah. right in the way. Like it was really just a Kyrie and LeBron show. I'm gonna keep it. Jr. Yeah. Smith pitched in a little bit too. With, Jr. You know, definitely did shooting, an excellent job in the series. But to your point though, the teams I just mentioned, outside of the KD Warriors. Which one sign and seal are you saying, oh, they're more talented than this current Boston Celtics team? Hmm. The only one I would say, think about is 2017 Spurs. They were fucking oh, What about last year's Denver deep. Nuggets? What about Toronto? Toronto, I think they're deeper. Deep. I wouldn't say they're as Toronto's talented. I think, think Boston's Denver, first six clears Toronto. It's a good six. answer, but to me, it's the Jokic, Jamal Murray show. And then can't forget about KCP, Aaron Gordon, and, and MPJ. MPJ, who was a defensive playoff riser. I do think that this Celtics team, top to bottom, is more talented. I don't disagree wholeheartedly for the fact that you have unbelievable players at every single position. You have two elite defensive guards who both are shooting at a very efficient clip. I'll put it like this. Boston's next third or fourth guy would be the third best player in Denver. Yeah, Poor their victory is insane. Or, their so it's like, is insane. If it goes to that, it gets to that point, it's like... I agree. Yeah. Yeah. They I have just the think best third overall, option in the NBA. Overall, the, De the Denver Nuggets just put it together, and they were yeah. an amazing team. I've seen people make this comparison before, that the Celtics, these Celtics are the 49ers of the NBA. It makes some sense. I mean, you look at the Celtics roster. Jalen Brown is arguably one of the best second options in Absolutely. the league. Porzingis is the best third option in the NBA. Derek White is the best role player in the NBA. Him and Herb. Drew Holiday, 63% on corner threes Stupid. this year. It's been absurd. He is, a lot of NBA players have voted on this, the best perimeter defender in the NBA, according to NBA players. You know, got to trust NBA players and their opinion on this. Uh, they have voted him. But the guy at the top, just like the 49ers, the guy at the top, the quarterback, Will that quarterback be able to lead you to the win? We're going to question Jason Tatum Celtics, again. Jason Another Tatum. Another episode. Rose just called him Brock Purdy. I just want you to. <laughs> the guy who's been in the playoffs. The guy who's been in the finals. The guy who has multiple 40-point games in the playoffs. That guy has been in the playoffs and has been in the finals. And has multiple in the last, 40s. In his last two playoff runs, in 14 games out of 44 games, he shot under 40% from the field. That's 32% of games in the playoffs. So that means Jason Tatum has a one-third chance of having a stinker when he gets into the playoffs. What's his record in those games where you just only looked at the oh, field it's a, So a, a, a record I'm is asking. an individual thing? I'm asking. It's a team thing. Exactly. So why is it that we just look at Jason Tatum? No, but I'm just saying, I'm not looking at Jason Tatum. I'm just refuting your point. The well, real answer record? for me, uh, well... I don't know. I don't know what the top of my head. All I'm saying is this is Jason Tatum's individual performances. Mm. Ultimately. Because Jason Tatum got hurt in game seven versus the Heat, and they didn't stand a chance. The real answer for can, he, can anyone stop the Celtics, the Nuggets out west, you have to respect them because of Nikola Jokic and uh, what they can do. Absolutely. The real answer is themselves. <laughs> it, 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 this team is stacked. It, Drew Holiday, 
30.4% from three his last 40 games in the playoffs. He hasn't been a good offensive player in the playoffs his last two playoff runs. Jalen Brown in an ECF shot 16% from three. Al Horford last yeah, year in the playoffs one bad playoff shot 29.8% from three. There are times where these players can get inconsistent. Drew Holiday, we saw that in Milwaukee. Times in Milwaukee. Al Horford, there are times when you're saying yeah, Brown. You, you're hitting this at a 40% rate in the regular season. And now in the playoffs, you're not shooting well. I already told you. Jason Tatum, six games last year, he shot under 40% in the playoffs. He shot under 40% in the playoffs in eight games on a run to the finals. That has been 14 total playoff games in the last two playoffs, 44 games, which is 32% of games. There's a 33% chance, about a 33% chance Tatum shoots under 50, well, under 40% yeah. from the field in the playoffs. I'm, I'm willing to gamble that so first enough one, chance. The, most of them games is probably in the Warriors series. So you're telling me there, there is a 67% chance that you're getting a great game from Tatum? I got a year super, so I got to get more than so that. The, so <laughs> forget about 50 50. There's no 50 50 anymore. You're giving me 60. What do you think Jokic is? Chance. Go, Jokic is a, okay, we're talking about the best a 99% in the hit rate we're ultimately. We're talking about the best player in the league. Jason Tatum's not the best player in the but league. Tatum is supposed to be top 10. He's supposed to be one He's, of the best players is. in the league. He is, right now, you can argue and make a legitimate argument for one of the more inconsistent superstars when he gets into the playoffs. But again, we already have these playoff moments where he has stepped up to the plate and hit home runs. Okay, he stepped up to the plate, but still his body of work in totality, he's one of the more inconsistent playoff performers amongst these superstar players. The regardless truth is that we've seen Jason Tatum in these moments and back against the wall, he still was able to go in Milwaukee, outperform at the time the best player in the world Only in game six. and force a game seven. <laughs> the Joker was always the best, man. Always the best. He was not always the best. When he dropped 50 in game six to close out the NBA Finals, Jokic was not considered better than him. I thought he was. Okay, then you were, at the time, delusional and hoping and praying. Denver was just injured, to be fair. They were injured. So, Riff, to answer your point, on the run to the Finals, four of those games where Tatum shot under uh, 40% were in the Finals. Uh, Two of them came against Miami. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of them... Was it game one in the Milwaukee? Two of them came against Milwaukee, game one, and in game three, he shot 21% from the field, four for 19. Now, talk to me about game six and seven, just real quick. Well, game six, he had 46, Mm -hmm. and then game seven, he had 23 points. Oh, that was the Grant Williams Masterclass. I think we need to lock in on those four games in the finals. No, for sure. That was definitely the finals. Three for 17, he shot 17% from the field in the finals. I remember. Three for 17, eight for 19, nine for 23, eight for 23, 10 for 20, six for 18. I mean, Jesus yes, Christ. he is the most inconsistent superstar when it, when it comes to the yes. playoffs. That Warriors defense was good as fuck, That's though. why if I had... Oh, uh, bro, 17. Nah, nah, that's, that's crazy. Terrible. Andrew Wiggins had him in a box. Yeah, uh, he did. A and they won that, that game, by the way. Uh, three for game, 17. Game one, three, when he so shot... They yeah, won. But they because won. how many assists did he have? He was on his Anthony Edwards before Anthony Edwards was a thing, right? No, he oh had a good playmaking day. I'm asking a question. He had a good playmaking day. Because he had 14 assists, correct? He had 13. 13, excuse me. 13 assists, but they still won that. He was on his Anthony Edwards. turnovers, too. He did. He, he did. also let that. He, I think it's he like broke one a of record. the all-time amounts of turnovers that posted. I hate that from him. I, that from him. I feel <laughs> like, and I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like if collectively we all trusted Jason Tatum a little bit more, there would be no question as to who everybody has winning the NBA championship this year. I mean, for me, it's not only Jason Tatum; it's Drew Holiday too. I've seen him put up so many stinkers in the playoffs, especially as a scorer. Jalen Brown. I mean. Even from last year, that how many turnovers did he have in that in that game seven? They had like nine turnovers. But JC, true or false? Jalen Brown has not had a bad playoff series before that one. Question: Bad well, playoff series? Nah. Bad. I don't think I don't remember nah, him not having bad. bad. He's, bad. He's almost a a one hundred percent success rate in the playoffs. Sixteen percent. But, from the but three to be fair, the, the year bad. before the problems he had in Miami last year, the year before he had the they same problem. They just weren't as big Emphasized. as last year. Mm-hmm. Um, so you say, you're saying. If we trusted Tatum more, we would have Boston as the clear cut favorites to win it yes. all. Correct? I mean, they're still the favorites, of course. Yeah. But, 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 but we don't care about sports. We talk about it at home. 100%. Right here, right? So I'm asking you this question How many players hate being a fan. do you trust more than Tatum? Out of all these teams are in the playoffs right now. So exclude the playing teams right now. One through eight. To perform East better? West. How many, no, how many players do you just trust more than Tatum? Jokic. Nikola Jokic. Yeah, yeah. Luka Doncic. Uh-huh. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Oh, yeah. Steph Curry. Oh, I'd uh, say not the playing, but sure. You keep going. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi. he uh-huh. mentioned it. SGA has been there. I trust him more, though. 
I do. See, and this is and yo, this is, real, and real this quick, is, real quick. I had a question. Yo, is it crazy to say you trust Jimmy more than Tatum? No, in the playoffs. Okay, no, okay. I was crazy. But, that one but, there but, too. but this is where Jimmy my problem too. stems from because the, your answer right there, saying I trust SGA more nah. without any actual evidence, but That's you have all faith. the evidence in nah, Tatum, is that. implying that this is sheer hate. It's not sheer hate. I, it I just be. give. I just gave you evidence. You didn't give me evidence. I mean, SGA. I think, you gave me no, faith. Faith is there's no. There's no. There's no. There's no evidence with evidence SGA in the playoffs. In the playoffs, there's no evidence with SGA. For sure. It's but just blind faith. From what I've seen in the regular yeah. season. He is amazing. What I've he's seen, amazing. I've seen him be able to score at all three levels at the efficient rate that he's scoring at. He's damn near 50, 40, 90 for a guard this year with the volume and the mid-range shots. He's shooting 88% from the free throw line, 39% from three. Is he shooting 39 50% from the field. He he's damn near 50, 40, 90. I think that would translate. And I think his play style is more transferable and to the playoffs than Jason Tatum's. And I think his playoff style makes for a more consistent oh, brother, random three basketball. Attempts. <laughs> three attempts, 39%. Ah, that's okay. Three I mean, it's, it's raised month nah, by month. Three that's attempts. Terrible. I mean, that's not his game. It's not really good. It's not his game, though, so it's not It's really not his game. I mean, you could argue, you know, Tatum, of course, he takes more three-point shots than SGA. Makes sense. But SGA gets their basket 24 times a game, yeah, yeah, which no, is SGA, much more than Tatum. But, uh, but Tatum in his own right. Is an only finisher. Yeah, but he doesn't get to the basket like SGA. But then That's you the could point. say you could argue the same way. Oh, but SGA is shooting a better efficiency than Jason Tatum from three, but he doesn't shoot the ball from three like T- Jason Tatum does. No, I think Tatum's a better three point shooter. I never said um, SGA was a better three point shooter no, than Tatum. Better, I'm just saying shooter. that. SGA, no, that's a clear. SGA is a better. You talk about shooter. who drives to the basket better, who finishes in the mid range area better. It's SGA. It's crazy because SGA's game is going to either be. Michael fucking Jordan or DeMar DeRozan? There's like, like it's like legitimately. DeMar DeRozan? That's if you look at if you look at the game how he translates. I would, I would it, say James Harden. Insane. No, no. This what is I, where he's digging himself into a hole. No, no, no. no. He's Harden digging himself else. into a hole. You know, what I'm saying. No, I understand. He doesn't take many threes. He loves the mid range and he likes to go to the basket. Whose games translate like that? Michael Jordan, DeMar DeRozan is a time. I'm just using him because he's a choker, is what I'm saying. But it's never, it's not, there's no in between. Because if you look at guys who, like Dwayne Wade, if you look at guys who have this type of game style and they go into the playoffs, they're either fucking amazing mm-hmm. or they're like literally just chokers. So there's like no in between. Like with Tatum, it's like you have the, he's good, he can be great. You know, there's sometimes he's not. With, with this type of play style, there's really like no in between. There is 0% chance SGA chokes in the playoffs. Uh, I wouldn't say zero, but there's a low percent no, no, for me. There's like a chance. I'm I'm on I'm point. near zero. I'm, I'm, I'm like near 10. Zero. I give it ten. He's falling off, man. Now listen, I'm okay. Not, it's just yeah, like, I don't I don't want to get stuck on this conversation because this is ultimately about who I trust more in the playoffs more than Jason Tatum, SGA. I won't even mention him so we can move past this conversation. I mentioned Jokic. I mentioned Giannis. I mentioned Luka Doncic. He's Kawhi, not in the playoffs Kawhi. right now. Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard. That's five players right there. Um, Kevin Durant. I still do. I still do. Devin Even Booker. Though Jason Tatum I think already cuss. outperformed him. Kevin the Durant's series. the only player Devin ever to average Booker. 35 in the finals on his shoe shooting percentage. What, okay. what are you saying? That was also Devin the Booker? Yeah, that was on the greatest No, I ever. said Devin Booker. Jason Tatum I'm not putting his lunch money. Oh, 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 oh. Jason Tatum took his lunch money in that playoff. He did. Bro. No, he did. He did. Jason bad. Tatum outperformed him. That shit was very bad. He outperformed him. There's no doubt. But I saw KD with no help. At an even playing field. On an even playing field. That was mad long ago. What do you mean yeah, even playing field? Like that. Celtics versus Nets. Go, bro. It was an even playing field. That go. That should go, because bro. That's how many people low, had the Nets winning that series? Bro, which, they wait, had lineups out there. Seth Curry and the series, The Nets versus Celtics. I mean... Because you, you picked the Nets. I had them. You picked the Nets. I, no, for sure. You're a Nets fan. That's fine. We had them because of the star power. And the stars didn't show up. Yeah, Kyrie and Kenny I said even playing field. So leave it at that. It's not an even playing field. Oh, my God. Celtics team was a better rock team. There's no excuse there. It was okay. an even playing field. I will still, leave it I at trust, that. Still, I trust Kevin Durant more. I do. Okay. I, I trust Kevin Durant more. He said more. no playing teams, right? Even though the last two years. He said no playing teams. Ugh. So then outside of that, I mean, can I say Anthony Edwards? Do you trust him more? I do. But that's. Uh, I do. But that's more you being a fan. No, no, no. That's more me. I, I see him just, average. But why? There's just no <laughs> statistical <laughs> evidence of that. What do you mean? Anthony Edwards. <laughs> did you see what he just did in the playoffs? I, have you seen? Yo, uh, <sighs> <laughs> he averaged 31. I don't like Tatum. I don't like the Celtics. I hate the fact that I have to keep so how many play, this So man. how many players do you trust over Tatum in the playoffs? Tatum had 50 against the Bucs. 
sucks. <laughs> so how many players do you trust over Tatum? And against the Philly. Sixers. No, he and had 50 against, against the Sixers. Philly. He had 46 he against had, the Bucks. He had 14 in the fourth. Yes, he was having. Yes, a, yes. Oh, he was literally. Yes, in game we had six. tweets ready yes. after the third quarter. Like yes, Tatum is over. stinking he's, this shit up. He's yeah. garbage. And he saved his and legacy. He, like, he saved his legacy in 12 minutes. He talked about Anthony Edwards 30 points in five games. Who do you trust more in the playoffs? I trust all the old heads. That was And then the Joker and Giannis. Shitted on us. All the old heads meaning. I trust LeBron. You trust Anthony Steph? Davis or Jason Tatum in playoffs? I trust AD. Steph? More Over than Tatum. Jason? His defense. Steph? His defense Fuck, moves the shit true. out of me. He's OD in the Steph. playoffs. Yeah, AD, LeBron, Steph. Um, you Kawhi. said no playing teams. That's why I, I yeah, couldn't mention LeBron. Yeah, yeah, Kawhi. Know, they kept talking about Kawhi, of course. Um, Giannis, Joker. Jimmy? Jimmy's like a hit or miss toss up, but yeah, sure. I, I'll trust him more. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. Like, but I, I've seen Tatum go to bat with him, so that's like a one one thing. That um, is that's see, two years you can ago. also say in the East, you've seen Tatum go tit for tat with every superstar in the East. Every single one. You've seen him yeah, go tit for tat. I still trust tat. Giannis more. That's fine. I agree. How many superstars in the East are there really, though? Giannis, it's it was Giannis, KD. But Giannis outplayed Tatum. I don't know. You called Halley a superstar. Huh? How many superstars in your eyes? Relax, really? Riff. You relax, did. Riff. Come on, you taking Discord conversation? Ah! Giannis outplayed Tatum. Yes, he did. But in the legacy game, Game Six, he got outplayed why? by Grant Williams. No, so, that was Game Seven. Yeah, so you're, game seven. you're basing it off who who played better for the entire series off of one game no, for closing out the series. It was Game Six. Close out the series. Game at Seven. Home. Game Seven. Grant will you're at home. Class, close out Tatum. the game. I agree. Giannis tried. He tried his hardest. I think he had forty three in his own in right. Game seven. Yeah, no, in game in game, game no, six. No, Giannis did not play well in game seven. He did it. So in game, game six, Giannis Tatum. played well. So you're but telling me Giannis had forty. Cool. He had a double double. It was blowing him out. It was blowing it out. Blowing him out. Game. But why didn't they close out the series? But I'm I'm telling you for the entire series. No, I trust Giannis too. All I'm saying is tit for tat. We have seen in games. Jason Tatum, yes, yes, go up against these superstars and get the better of them. We've seen Tatum stink it up against superstars. We have Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler has played better than Tatum when they've met most times or not. I mean, not really. Giannis outplayed Tatum in that series. Last Celtics year. Celtics may have won that, but Giannis outplayed him. And he didn't have Chris Middleton in that series. True. And it went to seven. True. But again, game six, great. game seven, Giannis was, a, he was amazing. Joel Embiid, I Closing feel like out the he, series. he is gone from this conversation because yeah. he doesn't show up in the playoffs uh-huh. or he's injured in the playoffs. Yes. So, you know, him outperforming Embiid, to me, doesn't hold much weight. Because then we just trust more Embiid or Tatum. Tatum. Thank God we're at that point. Yeah, Embiid's right. never even healthy during play during Phew. the playoffs. And B's not got ugly. That could have thought he was gonna go Embiid. That's and B's like, he doesn't show up in the playoffs. But well, that's why we don't add him, him in these conversations, you know? Sad, man. So really the only superstars in the East that we're talking about are Jimmy, Giannis. We Kevin. already said Embiid's. I was gonna say James out Harden, do we count him? No, it's Kevin Durant, the other one. Really, that he's had to go like tit for tat with Kyrie and I guess Irving, LeBron superstar or no. 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 So the only one he's outplayed for real is KD, but and that was one series. But that's what I'm saying. That, like the and West, Jimmy, he did outplay. G- uh, but I'm saying Jimmy Butler outplayed, outplayed, outplayed him. They traded. They outplayed him more series. times than that. But how? Because of 2020? Is that what you're trying to? What do you mean how? No, play better. The year they went to the finals, Jason Tatum was the best player in the series. Last Jimmy Butler hits that three. They go to the finals. Last year, Jimmy outplayed. Him. How about Last the bubble? Year? Last year, did, bubble? Jimmy did outplay him. I feel no. The bubble. Oh, that's the one I'm looking at. Jimmy. Bubble, yeah, you got it. No, the last year. Yeah, they beat him in six. But I'm saying Jimmy wasn't even their leading scorer in the bubble. It was Goran no, in that yeah. series. In that series, I don't. He, I, I don't think, think he was their leading scorer. Twenty like eighteen or something and then like Goran that. And Goran Dragic was putting yeah, up twenty one. Yeah, he wasn't. I think the year after that, Jimmy was putting up forty balls on them. Let's see. I'm looking at the ECF from last year. Jimmy Butler averaged twenty five, eight, and six. I might be talking about the year before with that. three steals. I know. I'm just going down the list. Tatum averaged twenty five, ten, and five. Butler averaged twenty five, eight, and six with. Three steals. Bam out of bio. Each other out, leading man. score in the bubble. That's my brother in Christ. I've been trying Corey to. Corey Dragic, out, number two. Uh, yeah, he was, was he was two. cool in that. Tyler was, Hero, number three. In the 2022 ECF, Tatum averaged 25, 8, and 6. Butler averaged 26, 7, and 3. Oh, so they're neutral, man. These numbers, they're neutral in the playoffs. Tatum's efficiency was pretty bad in the ECF 2020, but yeah, he, was getting locked up, he did bro. average 27. He was getting locked up, bro. For the most part, they cancel each other out. The only it's, one that it's he, just the West. The, the only one he outplayed thoroughly was, was Kevin, Kevin Durant, Durant that one series. I will give you that. Not 100%. Not a top twelve player all time. All right, and it, it, he got outplayed. That is what it this is. This is why the question comes because he's gonna have to play a team in the West, and you trust these other guys over him in the West. So, well, not Jokic. Hell no, no, I say you trust oh, yeah. these other guys over him in the West. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. Yeah, sure. so like it's like 
Like Tatum has I hope to he doesn't see the Lakers. You know, you know, I don't know. It's it's gonna be tough for him, but nah, it'll be a they got a stacked team. So it is a crazy stat though that thirty two percent of Tatum's games he shoots under forty percent from the field in the last two playoff runs. Isn't that crazy? That's <laughs> one third of games. No, Tatum, he, he has his most that's that's, rib, that's, really that's our roll what dice. Is this? What? What are you doing? R- rolling dice. Oh, relax. You, Come on. Was, fault, he said rolling dice. I said rolling dice. Yeah. He's doing that's, it like right here. That's me. Like Isn't that crazy? <laughs> that's me. That's me rolling dice. And one of these three rolls, Tatum has a bad game. That's not how dice work, buddy. <laughs> That's that's the percentage chances no, of it. Yes, it is. If I roll the dice three times, one, one out of the of three. Six. Stop. Stop. What do you mean? You get in a dice. You got six opportunities. Don't make me school you with math. Stop. It's there is a roll. 67, 68 percent chance that Tatum will have a great to elite game. There's a 33 percent chance he plays bad. So you're taking the 33 percent. You're gonna take the, the 33 time. over the 67, which is larger. No. Yes, the larger the. <laughs> No, hold up, hold up. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm not saying I'm taking the lower number. I'm saying that yes, the 66 percent chance that he plays well, 67, that 67 percent, that's a good percentage. But ultimately, it's too low for a superstar player. If you a superstar player, I need to know that 80 percent of the time, at least, you gonna show up. And for Tatum, it's at 67 percent. Riv, why don't they talk about the the Dallas Golden State? Series that that much? Why because, don't they talk about it? Um, because it wasn't close. Riv, if you do you feel well, comfortable WCF, if I'm telling yeah, yo this player, your best player on the team got a 67 percent chance about of that playing Luka great. Has the most points per no, game ever in the if playoffs, but they don't talk about the efficiency in that series. That's why I'm a Steph. Fan. You shot 41 percent right? right there, you know? in uh, in WCF. Who? They don't talk the, about that. Luka Doncic. All they talk about number one in points per game in the playoffs. He's a dog, Yo, absolutely. But they don't talk about the, the efficiency. He was, I mean, he was inefficient. It was because he was number. He was the only guy. It was really That's what ridiculous. I'm saying. He had. I mean, I don't know. They let him eat. Let yeah. him eat. Beat everybody. Drew, you was under the assumption I was rolling two dice. I'm talking about just one dice each. One round. dice. You still have a one six chance. Yeah. That's less than thirty three. Explain that to me, because I'm not understanding. I'm you not. Have six, I'm not it's six. Six sides. You get one, two, three, four, five, six on a dice. All right, you roll it once. There is a one six chance that you'll get either a one, a two, or a two, or a three, or a three, maybe four. Hey, four or five or six. I understand that part, uh-huh. but I'm speaking about this in terms of just when it comes to Jason Tatum's performance. Yeah, you just used the wrong terminology. You did. Yeah, you yeah. Did. I probably use the three-sided wrong terminology. Three sided die. That's what you have to say. There's a three sided die. I rolled that three sided die. Yes. I mean, a, those are a little crazy. It, <laughs> I I I was under the assumption that you guys would understand the analogy. Ultimately, it I got three I cards. I, I, got, I got three cards. There One go. of them nice. is going to be a Tatum stinker. Nice. The other two going to be great games. That's not good averages for. Do you a think superstar. Tatum's going to show up in the finals? Just the finals. Let's fuck the East. Let's talk about the finals because we've seen him show up. In Who's the East? he playing? Multiple times. Let's say he, let's say he plays either the you got four you got the top four you got four. Let's play your little game. You say he's. It's going to stink it up 33% of the time. So I'm going to give you three teams, the Clippers, Denver, and Minnesota. I'll throw your buddies in there, you know. But out of those three teams, who is he going to stink it up against? 33% chance. So well, maybe Clippers, all three. Maybe you think he'll um, do it all three. He should Denver. play well in the finals. Okay. He should play well. You have no he should play well. shame, Joel. <laughs> he you should play no well. Shame. Okay, next team. He should play well. No shit, but you're saying That's such a cop out. Like, of on. course he should play. Why well. shouldn't he play well? <laughs> Yo, I'm asking you. Do you think he'd play well? I think the Clippers series is a little bit easier for him. I understand Kawhi. And Go Paul all George. in on this hater for Jason I, I Tatum. I understand Kawhi and Paul George. They got the defensive resume, but the way I see the Clippers switch on defense, yeah. that worries me. So I think he would have oh, a great series against the Oh, you saw him get baked the other day. That's what it was. I know. He, I, I okay. seen him get baked a lot. I'm you, saying you saw him get baked a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. switches. Um, LeBron. So. Denver, <laughs> mm. with Aaron Gordon, KCP, they got some bigger bodies to throw at him. I feel like that could throw him off his game a little bit. If, if it's a six, seven game series, he'll play bad two, three of them games. Okay. Probably Minnesota. two of them games. Minnesota. Definitely same amount, okay. you know, because the McDaniels and Edwards and their defensive. If they prowess. play Minnesota in the finals, I feel confident the Celtics win that series. Yeah, you I'm should. not gonna lie, me too. Yeah, you should. Denver, you should. I don't feel confident. No, it's no, it, it might get ugly. It might get ugly. It might get ugly. It would. It might get ugly. Aaron Gordon. It would get the bad. The silence. The silence is deafening no, from yeah, this. Of course. It might get bad. I don't think Denver? it's gonna get ugly. It's going to be a whole lot worse for Danny ugly series because yeah. it's going to be a defensive series. Now nah, it's going to look like that Nuggets Heat series last it's gonna year. It's going to be in your mouth series. That's what? how they're going to be. 
playing defense. Denver, that was just about Denver. Denver. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, you saw my boy McDaniel's last night. He's back. He had twenty. I saw that. Not very good efficiency. They Malik did Monk lose. went crazy. They lost. Respect Malik Monk, please. I like yeah, Malik, Malik Monk. Monk. Have what thirty nine? Yeah, they yeah. lost. So they me, me and JC had this debate yesterday. Uh, who do you <laughs> think is the better player, Miles Bridges and Malik Monk? Malik Monk. Your no hesitation. I like Malik Monk's game more. I said Miles Bridges. Ooh. I said Malik Monk too. That's I like Malik close. Monk's I said Miles Bridges. That's close. We debated who's a better scorer between the two. Oh, it's I Malik, Malik Monk. Monk. It's no question. Yeah, Malik Monk. That's really what his his mo you think is. Miles has is a better scorer. Who are they, Malik Monk? Yeah, I think they're about the same. Oh hell no, nah. I do. Malik is a they both bomb. put up the same amount of points. Well, that's because Malik is. And a, they both we were looking a, at the percentage. They shoot the same. Percentage. Malik is, they have the Malik, same amount of points because of situation. Malik is in a limited role. Malik out just fifteen. Bridges is at twenty one. I mean, yeah, but Malik he has to play off certain players. That's, Charlotte, yeah, yo, Miles I mean. Bridges, like yo, he's ice on all the time. Lamelo's missed mad games. Like that's true. I like. It's I like, funny though because we were looking at their stats. They both had the same exact career high. They both averaged the same amount of points on the same percentages. Mm -hmm. Malik's are a uh, better mid range shooter. Yeah, Have yeah. you seen Malik's playoff stats? He averages nineteen in the playoffs against the Warriors in the first. He's yeah, really good. Last year. I think it's close. Malik's very good. I got to see Miles. I miss, in a, I miss I Malik. I got to see Miles in a better situation. He's in a shitty situation, you know. No, it's, it's tough to judge. That should make him look better. That. Honestly, you in a dog shit situation. That's what you got to turn up at your best. Now, this next topic. As constructed right now, which West teams will make the playoffs from the plan? Seven seed Kings, eight seed Mavericks, nine seed Warriors, ten seed Lakers. Kings versus Ma Kings versus Mavericks for the seventh seed. Who wins that? Dallas game? will beat the shit out of them. Yeah, beat I the, got the shit out of them. All right, I was being rude, but Dallas will win. I got Dallas. I got Dallas winning too. Dallas. Luka might have fifty. He might. He might. Kings have a shitty defense. Unless De'Aaron Fox just goes and breaks him down, he gives him fifty himself. Because you saw that defense this, from your boy yesterday. Because every time Jalen Brown matched up against Luka Doncic, it was absolute fool. Bruh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was like a couple times. Every That's time. all we need. Jokes over and facts. Then, and then we've also seen Luka Doncic touch the floor because of Jalen Brown. We've also seen that. Uh, but let's let's matchup. talk about Dallas uh, versus the Kings. Let me not get sidetracked. Let me take. not do that. Let's hear it. So, Kings won't finish seven. They're dropping out of the plane. <laughs> No, they'll finish at nah, the nah, end nah. of the play. No, no, no. Everybody's oh. a lock in the plan. <laughs> After they just beat the, the, the You got them 10? 10? I, I, think Kings, I think Kings finish like 9 or 10. So it's a sleeping giant in this play -in, man. It's not the Lakers, by the way. It's okay, not the Lakers. So who you got? Kings and Mavericks? I'll probably take the Mavericks. Dallas. Okay, so the Mavericks are locked in at the 7th seed. Now comes the next game. The greatest playing game ever. Warriors versus Part Lakers. Two. Part 2. We're here. We're here. Who would win that match? Warriors. Oh, oh really? Even though healthy. Warriors. Healthy. Last time we played I got them, the Warriors. Healthy. Okay. We weren't healthy. I have the Warriors. Double OT. Chris Paul didn't play. <laughs> nah, you, you, you're working nasty now. You said healthy. This guy just said Chris Paul. Chris Paul's been good. Because the last time we played, LeBron didn't play. Someone so who actually even. is impactful. We're even. Chris Paul's impactful. Did you see him? You guys been playing your best basketball without. Finally, uh, you're on the Chris Paul way. Well, he just had He's playing better now. He, he watched him in the garden. He felt. He felt something. No, he was playing no. much better. Like yeah, he, and Moses Moody. Listen there. Yo, okay. Okay. Now, okay. Um, we're home in that one. Because we have to... Uh, have, yeah, yeah, that, that'd be uh, pretty tough for us. Ooh, but we good. have Beach Hall and Chase. Double OT. Yeah, yeah, no. Steph had 40. I don't think players have CT no more. I think we've recovered. <laughs> so, like, man, that game was rough. So I'm always taking my Lakers. Lakers. That game was okay. I'm always taking Warriors. So you're going Warriors. Yeah, so, JC, no you got who, the Warriors. Why do you got the Warriors? Um, who's well, stopping AD? Huh? Draymond. I think we're past those days. Well, who's sticking who's stopping Steph? Steph? haven't stopped that yet. You got me. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, if you look at the last 16 games, Warriors are 13-3. and three. They're a pulling offense. They're looking like they're starting to wake up. The role players coming back. Obviously, Chris Paul came back his last game. He was impactful. And, you know, like, just on, on top of everything, like, the two teams that I have to, like, kind of, like, you know, like, move a little bit forward, it would be the Mavericks and the Warriors. Uh, strength of schedule really, in my opinion, matters. The Lakers have the second hardest schedule. They face a te teams with nah, a 56%. Bro, it's, it's terrifying. Yeah, it's 56% win percentage, so they have a very, they have the second hardest. I forgot who Man. was number one. I don't think that's going to play into their favor. I saw them go into overtime with the Wizards, the, like, the other night. Yeah, what like happened, they're, bro? They're just, we beat the shit out of the Wizards. It was on a back-to-back. We were on, we we flew in <laughs> seven in the morning. Our plane messed up against it the Raptors. It was a back to back after a grueling game versus the Clippers. We took them for granted. And Which you should have lost that game too. Fits. I mean, Which you guys one? won that game. The Clippers you should have lost. What that are we game. talking about? Oh, you, guys lost. Lost. you guys were down no, twenty one no, in the fourth. You guys were down twenty one in the fourth. No, no. You should, how, you should, them, how you should rephrase they it? The Clippers choke. You should rephrase it. Paul George ain't play. The Clippers should have won. 
Zubac didn't yeah, play. And they well, yeah, and barely lost. skated by. That has nothing to do with the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, barely skated, skated by. They're the missing two starters. No, the Clippers threw. Two starters. The Clippers threw. That's on them. They did. They choked. They, they, they absolutely threw it. And they LeBron got went to overtime with the fucking Wizards. Yeah, that was on a back to back. We have played like three games, games in four nights. nights. Shouldn't have beat the Clippers, bro. Okay, well that's yeah, on them. Yeah, win those games. I'm supposed to be upset that we came back twenty one down. PG and Zubac play. Do you win that game? Prop in that situation. They actually have not won. But we have. We haven't beat them. We have. I was gonna say they. No, they beat us one time. It that? beat us one time in the late. I think LeBron James did not play that game. Yeah. Oh, yeah, facts, he beat facts, us facts, once, facts, 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 and we played them with Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi, and we beat them. Yo, wasn't that the largest LeBron comeback in his career? I, down I twenty-one that. in the fourth. I heard was that, it? but I didn't it know was, if that no, it was, was true. It was. It was. It they were down twenty-one like in the fourth. It, it was I thought large we were down twenty-six to the Pacers at one point. No, in the fourth. There's no uh, way you guys came back down 26 in the fourth. No, I'm saying no, in the fourth. I think you, that was the largest you, comeback in the fourth. In the LeBron. fourth, such a specific stat. But I, mean, I, I believe that. I mean, I don't know, man. I, the way the Warriors are playing basketball, the way they're waking they up, easy schedule and they're too. home, they have an easy schedule. They have the they have the 20. They're like within the la, the five easiest schedules remaining in the NBA <laughs> left. You know what I mean? I so, love it. Um, I love they're it. picking up pace. They're in the lead offense. Um, they've done it before. You got to show them respect. They're going to be home. They're going to have that feeling that they have lost playing games before to the Lakers. Yo, I'm taking the Warriors this time around. Taking the Warriors this time around. You know what? You know, the way I've seen this team play the last couple of weeks, I feel like they're starting to take a turn for the better. They are. You know, they got two star players out there. Yeah, they're come on over. Out. Come on over. <laughs> and that's Steph Curry and Draymond Green. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Steph Curry yeah, because nah, I saw your dumbass tweet. tweet. Yo, that's huge, all your yo, dumbass game, tweet. Huge game tomorrow, by the way, against Boston. Oh, we if the them. Warriors win that, I'm locking it that they beat y'all. Okay. We own them. We I'm okay. locking that. Um, no, no, I saw your dumbass tweet. Yo, the Lakers really suck. Uh, nah, I've seen enough. Yeah, that is really bad. <laughs> yeah, no, it's one of the worst tweets ever, actually. One of the worst tweets ever. Respectfully, though. LeBron was really on his thing. Like, of course. Quarter, like, you know, of course he was. Outscoring the Clippers by himself. And then on the last possession, picking up Kawhi and Kawhi. Dumping I mean, it? Shit. Are you telling me? That's tragic. You're Clippers. Did, I mean, that's a, that's who a played? Sh- Did he play? Paul George? You're done. Zubach? You're done. I never want to hear my I'm, Clippers ever I've again. I've made this statement multiple times. If Paul George plays, it is my I Clippers. Thought, you think that was a bad look doesn't play, it's not my Clippers. That's a great I've, I've seen Kawhi make it's that shot before. It happens. Clippers. It's a great it's look. Clippers. It happens. PG plays on there. Though. Is it still your Thunder? Your OKC Thunder? Of course. I'll lock in with the Thunder, man. It's still When's it going to end? When's what? it gonna that talk? Talk. <laughs> you're losing the you're losing the thunder fast. Listen, we we come up here to do a job, <laughs> and when we come up here to do a job, you have to put the bias aside. Love the OKC thunder to death. I'm not gonna come up here and not do my job. You know what I'm saying? What's so, wrong with the thunder though? I like them. You because said no I, chance against the Nuggets. So still no chance. I don't know if I still I still lean no chance. Also, I don't. That makes I, me not a fan. No, that's disrespect. Oh. You were respect. literally on that wavelength like two weeks ago. You Timberwolves no chance against the Nuggets. So they got a chance. I'm like, asking Timberwolves. Yeah, Timberwolves yeah. gave them a good series last last year. First I think of all, wait, let's let's, let's nobody said they had no chance. We said we just think yes. we believe yes. Denver would win. Just like I, you think? No, no. Drew said no chance. Oh, okay. I said I just believe in my mind Denver would win. Is there a chance? There's always a chance. Just like how you believe SGA is better than Tatum. I still feel Denver no wins. My bad. I grouped you into what Drew said because Drew said there's no chance. See, it wasn't. And me. then I thought it might have been you. No, no, no. So no, you're no. saying I should apologize for spazzing on it. No, no, of course not. You, you know, we no, had a great conversation. He was the one that originated it. But again, I'm taking Denver in that series. So listen, I got the Warriors being the Lakers. So that means for the eighth seed, it's the Warriors and the Kings. You guys realistically dumb. think that's happening? Okay. Hold on. Whatever. Don't be dumb again. Warriors, Kings. Don't be dumb again. Who are you taking? I think the Warriors. I think the seventh and eighth seed, as it's currently constructed, would be the Mavs and the Warriors. But we know the Mavs. So you're saying the Lakers missed the the playoffs. The Mavs won. Yes. The Mavs won. They're going to get into the 6-5. It's crazy. Who are they taking out? The Mavs got a lot to lose, though. I'm hoping. Of course. They have a lot to lose. Dallas has a lot to lose. I already know the agenda is this dude's going to come with if Luka misses the playoffs again for a second year in a row. I respect Luka Doncic. He's a top four player in the world. That's all I'm going to leave it at. You better not miss the playoffs. <sighs> Top four player in the world. Don't miss playoffs back to back. He might be the. Mm. You're right. You, you could argue. You could make that player. argument. Best He's player the, the best miss, player miss in the world. If you miss nah, the that's playoffs, why I gotta make it. He's not missing it this year. He's yeah, not missing crazy. the playoffs. No, he shouldn't. Right? This year is no excuse. Hell they no. Win, they have a better roster. They're right? They made. They were aggressive at the deadline. They tanked last year. They were healthy for the first time last game. Against Boston, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and oh, yeah. then they showed them that well, they didn't belong. Boston. Yeah, it's Boston. Yeah, sadly. It's crazy. Some team's going to beat them tomorrow, 
Yo, that's a statement. You mentioned the Lakers. Here, bro. That'd be nice you mentioned the Lakers schedule. Uh, shout out to our guy, uh, Trevor Lane. He put out the schedule. The next five games. Yeah, Denver, crazy. OKC, Sacramento, Milwaukee, Minnesota. On the road? Only five. <laughs> On the road? We are home for the first, all of them. Oh, cool. Okay. So at least you okay, got that okay, factor. Okay, okay. What's for, the record for that for that stretch? So for the 20. We need to be 3-2. We and have two. 21 well, games tonight, 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 tonight. We have 20. We no, tonight? we could. We could. I Listen. Denver tonight. Denver, Denver I'm is watching that game. our crypto. Rose about to lie and say we can beat them. No, that's, that's what, I'm, not, I'm not. You chalking that up as an L. Sh- I have it. LeBron will get his 40k though. Talk your shit. Talk. Talk. How many points he's worth? Like 14. LBJ. Sweet. That's, oh, that's impressive. Is it 14 or nine? Maybe nine, nine or 14. One of the two. Uh, but he put out the 21 game schedule. Denver, OKC, Sacramento, Milwaukee, Minnesota. All those are home. Then we play at Sacramento, still relatively home game. Then Golden State, Atlanta, Philadelphia. Indiana, all home games. Philly's a wash. Atlanta, yeah, we should win. Indiana, we should win. Mm-hmm. Versus you guys at home, I had that as a W. Of course you uh, At Milwaukee, Me at like Memphis, it. at Indiana, at Brooklyn, at Toronto, at Washington. That's not terrible. That's not, not that, that But it's, it's a road. It's, 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 it's a tough eight, road trip. Those, those last three games, games, you should win. Those next eight games, right? Is that what it is? So I have, us, I have us in these. I'll just read the rest okay. of them. Cleveland, Minnesota, Golden State, Memphis, New Orleans. Now, I have us, in this 21 games, 14 and 7. That was me being relatively optimistic that we can handle the, the under 500 teams or r- around 500, and then paying respect to the Denver, paying respect to the Milwaukee at Milwaukee, paying respect to Golden State. We'll probably split one of them. OKC. Uh, OKC, we've handled, we've played them pretty well this season. I'm pretty sure we are undefeated against them, or we lost once to them this season. I think that we could win that game on Monday. Who's home? Who's home? We are. Okay. Um, another, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think about the losses. Yeah, man. Um, this Warriors schedule, somebody lied. Shit's so, kind of hard. hard. Uh, now, this one's tough. I'm not sitting here and saying that it says, it's not. Yeah, it says on, have, on the NBA, says, it says the 23rd hardest uh, We have Boston schedule. tomorrow, but then we go home, and we have Bucks, Bulls, Spurs. Then we go to San Antonio. Then we play Dallas and the Lakers on the road. Mm-hmm. Then we got the Knicks and Chase, the Grizzlies. Pacers, then we go to Minnesota, then we had to Miami, then we had to Orlando. So we got some gimmies in here, but it's, it's some it's some couple ones. Uh, well, it's off win percentage. So like those, yeah. like Miami doesn't have the best win percentage, but you know they're dangerous. Orlando's Pacers, also a scary Pacers team too. Have, no, Pacers have like it. Sacramento. We play twice here. I feel like we don't play them well. Mm-hmm. I, we, I'm not for worried whatever reason. JC, I'm not worried about the Pacers. Bro, I'll be we do have good, Yo, good ass games with them, but we come games. up short. Yeah, against yeah. against the Kings, you got some for of the whatever best games reason. I've seen this Sacramento season. has been a kryptonite of ours. No, I've been playing Xbox 360 lately, and I got a bunch of old games for it. I got NBA 2K10 for it, Lit. and uh, I was just swifting through Yo, the right. rosters, looking at that the rosters. Stretch, they're whack. Ooh. The ending stretch of that Warrior schedule: the yeah, Rockets, Trailblazers, it's Spurs. Music. They're whack. Jazz. And I'm just in disbelief of what LeBron James was able to do. In his first Cleveland stint in 2008, 2009, the Cavaliers went 66 and 16. And 16. Sweet. They had the fourth ranked offense, third ranked yeah. defense. This was their roster LeBron James, Mo Williams, who made an all star game that year, Zindra Sogowskis, Delonte West, Anderson Verjao, Daniel Gibson, Wally Zerbiak, Sasha Pavlovich, Ben Wallace, Great team. JJ Hickson. Great team. <laughs> I <laughs> look at yeah. that team won sixty six games a year this after. The, this is the team that they got hey, mad at LeBron for leaving. Respect Mo Williams though. Mo Williams, that's, that's all about. He's averaging nineteen again. Yeah, he was he was a dog. Respect Mo Williams. He, all he was one of the better that team was elite. for LeBron. Defensively, that team on. was insane. Defensively, yeah, oh no, for offensively, sure. Offensively, LeBron a backpack, but defensively, that team was fucking insane. The very next year in 09, 010, MVP. they won sixty one games. They won sixty one and twenty one. Top ten offense, top ten defense. And First MVP. the players, LeBron, J.J. Hickson, Anthony Parker, Anderson Verjao, Mo Williams, Zindris Ogauskas, Jamario Moon, Daniel Gibson, Delonte West, and past his prime Shaq, and they got Anton James. Well, I was going to say, when did Antoine come into the picture? Respect Daniel Gibson. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, he had a... He had a yeah. 27 points against the Pistons. It was 20, something, something like uh-huh. that. Saved LeBron them. played bad that game too, but it's honestly crazy when you when you look back at the rosters <laughs> that LeBron though. had in his first Cleveland stint. The fact that they were able to win sixty games with the talent back they had, back years is it's crazy. 
And they got mad at him for wanting to leave that. Yo, who was the coach? Yeah. Mike Brown was the coach of that team? Hell yeah. Yes. Did he win coach of the year that year? He did. He both did. years? I don't know I about both. One he won of them. 66, he got it though, right? I think it was the 66. He, he should. Won. LeBron gets not just his players paid, but his coaches paid. I mean, Mike Brown went to Sacramento and coach of the year too. That was after yeah. Golden State. I know he got he did Mike Brown. Like, he did not get a job for a while after yeah. after that. LeBron's a coach. Mike Brown won coach of the year that 08-09 season. Mike Brown wasn't he the coach of the Lakers at one point too? He was. He Fact. was. Yeah, I didn't think Kobe didn't like him because he ran some the Princeton offense. He wasn't fucking with him. I think that's why I think Kobe wasn't mm-hmm. messing with Mike Brown. He didn't last here too long. Yeah, but I'm looking at those rosters, man. It, it, was, it was rough. But 2K10, man, just looking through those rosters just brings back so much oh nostalgia. But the 2K ratings, they messed them up. Dirk Nowitzki was an 83 overall. Yo, Riv. And Devin Harris was an 87. 87. Or 86. What? Yo, they had, yeah. they had Devin Harris in 2K10 better than Dirk Nowitzki. Danny Devin Granger. Harris, they don't talk about he had Devin a, he had a twenty one and seven a year, but better than better one than of my uh, idols, better than Dirk is. You wild. know what? I respect you saying that, bro. They really don't give him enough credit. He was, one he of my was very players. cool playing he was basketball. Player. He was a good player. He was high flying. He had. I, I feel good like score. I remember hitting a bunch of half court shots. I modeled my game after him, man. I respect Devin that. Harris. Devin Harris, man. It's the Knicks were all star. He was an all star. He was. Year. The Knicks had uh, Nate Robinson, David Lee. Yeah, Those are the two best team. players. Fucking ass. Al Harrington, Chris Duhon. Slam dunk champion. What team are we looking Shout at? Shout out that to Chris Duhon, man. Like horrific. Damn, I haven't the heard that name in a minute. Yo, the Timberwolves were bad. Luke Ridenour. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they and were Johnny trash. Flynn? Johnny, Johnny Flynn. Flynn, yeah. Picked there. them over Steph. Goodness. Yo, that is crazy. They did. Hate that for them. Love that for me. Wow. Knicks were one pick away. And they were going to pick them, too. Of course they were. You guys said with Jordan Hill? Oh, my God. That's... So Settled bad. with Jordan Hill is hilarious. <laughs> Settled with Jordan Hill is, oh my God. It's been a lot of Western Conference talk on this episode, but, you know, just being honest, the Western Conference is it's entertaining. Fun. It's fun. The East, it, it, it doesn't feel like there's much intrigue there because we all kind of already are penciling in Boston yeah. to go to the finals in Eastern Conference. But in the West right now, we have the top four teams, the Timberwolves, the Thunder, the Nuggets, the Clippers. Which West playoff team is most likely to be upset in the first round of the playoffs. Why don't you start? What do you think, Riff? No, 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 no. You should start. Let's start with you, Mr. Yeah. Moran. Because I, I, I want to push this over to you because a couple weeks back, the answer was very clear cut for you, Oklahoma City Thunder. You actually had but, Dallas beating them. But after recent events have transpired, I feel like we are all assuming that you OKC could. cannot be your team. You know, So that kind of leaves you... Pigeonholed into taking one you're not going to pick Denver. You're not picking Denver. Doubt you'll pick the Clippers. Would you pick, would you pick a healthy Clippers to get upset in the first round? I don't know who I'm picking. You know, it's tough. The Western Conference, these top four teams, all amazing teams. There we go. The Timberwolves, you know their defense is legit. It's amazing. Their defense is the legitimate. Best it's elite. Yes. Anthony Edwards, he amazing puts talent. on the show. Amazing. They're not getting upset in the first round. No way. Wow. No way. Okay. Okay. No, no way. way. No, no Minnesota. Way, no not how. not them. Even if they go against the AFC, they, they, they will beat uh, the Warriors. Golden State Warriors. They don't match up well with them. No, no, they go against bad. the Lakers with AD. Talk to me. They will still beat them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they will oh, we talked about that. that. We talked about that the other night. What if I got they the Lakers. Dallas? I got the Lakers. We talked about what that the other night. What if they what play, play Dallas? Dallas? Tim Wolves come away on top. So Luca, Mr. Best player in the world, loses in the first round. Three times for the third time in his career. Wow. He really is following Michael Jordan's footsteps. Okay. The Denver Nuggets, we know what they are. They're an elite basketball team. For sure. They're not getting upset in the first round. We 100% round. agree with you. Oh, my God. He's going to say OKC. No, he's not. He's going to say gonna OKC. say the Clippers. He's going no, to say No, no, bro. He's saying OKC. The Clippers. You got the Clippers with Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> James and you're Harden. Go. You're go. Hey, Joel, do you want me to read you the matchup so it makes it a little easier? Like, what would it be today? No, no, no. no, no I fine. want to it's hear fine. this okay. spiel. You know the Clippers, they got the star power. You know, OKC, they're young. It's rare that a team like this has this much success. But they're the outlier. And they're so awesome. SGA, I think, is an elite player, superstar player. I think it's the Clippers. I told you. I think it's the Clippers. But how? How can we look at the Clippers and say that? The Clippers' defense has has fallen off a cliff. It hasn't been good these last 10 games. It's it's been terrible. The transition defense has been awful. In the last 10 games, they're 28th in defensive rating. They're 25th in rebound percentage. I feel like the biggest weakness with this team that I look at is defense. I know they got Kawhi Leonard. I know they got Paul George. But when you get switches onto other players, onto liabilities, 
it doesn't look great for them. And I think they lost a lot of their depth. This this team, realistically, I, I was looking at the roster. It's six players that I trust in the playoffs, 100%. You know, it's Harden, it's Paul George, like to play playoff minutes, of course. Harden, Paul George, Kawhi, Zubats, Terrence Mann, Norman Powell. That's seven. That's six. I heard that. I, I thought you said Terrence Mann. Harden, Paul George, Kawhi, Where's Mann, Zubats. Uh, he Norman just broke Powell. his hand. He just got hurt. Oh, uh, back. Even then, I think he's a little bit iffy in the playoffs. But you know, I would if he's healthy, I'll give him that respect. Mason Plumlee, not so much. Daniel Tice, I don't. And then out of those six players I trust, two of them are liabilities on a perimeter with Norman Powell and James Harden on defense. Mm-hmm. It will be very easy to pick them apart. And then Zubats has had a great season, but I've seen him in the playoffs before. He's not the best rim protector. He can get played off the court sometimes. So this team, I do think, has more holes than I originally anticipated. And I don't know if Kawhi and Paul George defensively can just mask their issues. We saw the Lakers make a great comeback, and there were times where you know Kawhi could have guarded up LeBron. Instead, you let Daniel Tice guard him in a switch. I was getting mad at that. And for me, maybe that's an adjustment they make come playoff time. You know, I trust Tyron Lue, but I think Tyron Lue has been a little bit questionable this year. And then the injury bug and concern is always up there with them as well. You're not hearing that, Tyron Lue disrespect? I feel crazy. Are you done? That shit's wild. I'm almost finished, Riff. Go ahead, (laughs) because ultimately, I look at these teams and I say... He literally pigeonholed himself it's, into it's taking hard. the Clippers. It's Yo, hard. Look and at the smile on his it's fucking hard. face. <laughs> it's hard to pick one of these and say, yeah, they're pretenders or they can get upset. But I look at the Clippers. If they get the fourth seed against Phoenix, I mean, that's a toss-up series. Well, they're four, toss-up. it's 4 or 5 right now. It's 4 or 5 right now. It's a toss-up series. That's, that's a, a toss-up. It, it is. You know, that would be a great series, but that, that's either, I want either that or. so badly. It can ha- either team can win that series. You lied. You did lie. Why did I lie? You, you, you lied so much. Lie. You, you you needed to pick the Clippers Where did I lie? because you didn't want OK, you didn't want to pick OKC because you couldn't go back on what you said last episode. You couldn't. You went on the full train. It's a top ten. Mm-hmm. It's a top five offense. Top five and, defense. And you you yeah, lied. We've said that to you in the past, and you said, "Nah, if the Mavericks saw them, it's food." Sometimes an individual has to come to his own light. Drew, he said, "I gotta go on my. I gotta walk my own journey." He said, "This team has defensive issues." <laughs> he said, "This team." <laughs> has a lot of mismatches. Mis- mismatches. I remember this team going into playoff series with Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris starting. And defensively, they figured it out. Tyron Lue is one of the best at adjusting. You said Kawhi. You got upset because Kawhi didn't switch on him in the fourth. When has Kawhi in the playoffs ever not did that? You see what I'm saying? How you just made all that up just so you times. wouldn't pick up? Yeah. So you wouldn't pick. I didn't make it up. Team. The defense has been bad. The defense has been bad in February. 100. percent It's called the slump. It's called the funk. You know, all the teams go through it for <laughs> sure. 100. percent That's what it is. Um, Joel, you're a funny guy, man. You're you're definitely a funny guy. I I, I think the issues you have with Norman Powell being a bad defender, it's it's sound. You know, James Harden is not a good defender. It's sound. They do switch a little bit too much, but I think. In the playoffs, they've always adjusted to that. You know, they don't switch a ton in the playoffs. You know, and I think with Kawhi, him not doing it in that Lakers game, he's understanding that it's not a necessary need to do it in the Lakers game because they're already 38 and 20 and they're the fourth seed. You know, the goal is to be healthy for the playoffs. You know, they're already experiencing PG dealing with some injuries and stuff like that. So I don't think, like... The defense is a concern. I think Zubak has been better as a rim protector, though, but he has been played off the floor. I really hilariously like that you didn't mention he got played off by Luka, which is a completely different than anybody else. But, okay, that was cool to I not add Luka that. Luka respect. Yeah, yeah, well, you didn't, well, you didn't I, do I've it. Told you you didn't do it. I told you in the past that Luka's dominated that series, and you tell me he hasn't. You're a liar. No, you've I, I you said in the fourth quarter he, he slows down, which is a fact. That, which is true. It's a fact. And who, you know why he slows down? Because somebody decides, all right, it's my turn to guard him. Or because they had to do everything for the three quarters before that. Both team. things can be true. Yeah. Both things. I love how you mentioned one thing over the other, though. Well, you did that. I'm wow. just following your game plan. Goodness. So who's your team that you think is most likely to get upset in the first Talk round? about it. Talk you, about you it. You know what I'm going to say. It, it ain't, listen. I love the Clippers. I think, and here's the thing about all these teams. I think three, three teams have a legit shot of losing in the first round of these four teams. I think Minnesota, OKC, and the Clippers. I, don't, I really don't think there's a scenario where Denver can lose in the first round. And I think... All these teams, like where there are in the standings, I think Pels, Kings, Mavericks, Warriors, and Lakers, no matter. They, Denver will wash all of them, like beat all of them. So I'm not really worried about that. I think some of these teams do offer problems for the other three teams, though. I think 
I would take the Timberwolves. <laughs> like I think, like I thought me, you were about to say OKC okay, for a quick second. No, nah, I think I'm gonna take the Timberwolves because I think offensively, like I think playoff experience is a real thing. And Joel, you mentioned it. There's been historically speaking, there hasn't been many teams, if any teams, that just walk into the playoffs with zero experience and make a run. You know, I, like I, off the top of my head, I can't think of it. But I, I think that like if I had to guess, there's not many teams you can think of off the top of your head. And I think Minnesota doesn't have a shit ton of experience over what OKC. What was the statement? I'm sorry. That like historically, not many teams have walked into playoffs with no experience and made a run. Fair. And Bell I think Bear, Cat, Conley. Yeah, yeah, yes. I think they have experience, but I don't think it's go deep into the playoffs experience. I don't think it's an insane amount over OKC, which is why I don't think that's First one comes to mind is Grizzlies. Like, the, them losing in the second round to Yeah, that, that would probably yeah, be the yeah, most. Yeah. And I think, like, OKC, top five, top ten in offense, top ten in defense, they do have a playoff superstar. Uh, they do have a rising superstar who can be great in the playoffs. And I think defensively, they're a great unit. They just are connected individually, connected as a team. And the way they get deflection, steals, the way they man up, they're in co- they're, they're cohesiveness is great. And then offensively, they just don't have the laps Minnesota has this, in my opinion. Like, I just don't think they're – like, I don't think – like, I think Minnesota at times – has bad breakdowns def- uh, offensively, has bad breakdowns in terms of just IQ plays, making the right read. I don't think OKC has shown that as much as the, uh, as the Timberwolves have. And I think OKC, you know, I don't think SGA is just a great playmaker, but he knows how to just make the right play, make the right pass. Same mm-hmm. thing with the other guys in J-Dub. J-Dub can get on the heater with Case and Wallace and stuff like that. So I think Timberwolves, would, for me, you know, especially with, you know, Dallas or – like one of these teams being the AFC, you know, or if OKC jumps up to one and Dallas gets, uh, Minnesota goes to two. But I think uh, Minnesota for me would be the one. And I don't think any of these teams are going to lose in the first round. And I think all these teams are pretty much geared up to go to the next round. And this, and this question honestly sets you up for any fan base or any team fans to kind of attack you. Because it is a tough question for sure. Because all these teams have a legit shot. But I, I think for me, I would go Timberwolves. Now... It's funny because of the four teams, the one who's been the most, eh, is the reigning champion Denver Nuggets. I say that with the idea they're not this great three-point shooting team. They really don't have that depth. Uh, They're right now dealing with a Jamal Murray injury, which apparently, thankfully, is not supposed to be serious, which is huge news for them because we understand they kind of go, the team is led by Joker. But this statement, whether you, you want to take it incorrectly or not, they go as far as Jamal Murray's health takes them. And that's been the truth for the last couple of years outside of last year where he was healthy. And when he was healthy, of course, Jokic is their best player, was the finals MVP, acknowledges the best player in the world. But we saw him go and average 26 in that postseason run on unbelievable efficiency, was one of the best players in the Western Conference Finals, was one of he was their leading assist, uh, excuse me, their their best playmaker in the in the NBA finals, had double digit assists in every game. So I, I'd look at the Nuggets and say this has been the most Eh, team of the four, but we give them that respect and understand that we kind of feel like they've been coasting a little bit, but hopefully we, we get some clear answers on Jamal Murray's injury because that'll be very telling on how we evaluate the Nuggets come playoff time. But the answer for me is going to be similar to Rivs. I, I look at Minnesota and yes, they are the number one defense, but if they go up against a team that can make Rudy Gobert uncomfortable and kind of have to drag him out of the paint, like we've seen in, in other playoff series, that's when I feel like Minnesota is vulnerable for the idea that their offense has not been, not been that good. 17th in terms of offensive rating outside of Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns. I'll give him that acknowledgement, of course, as getting getting a bucket if you need him to. But we understand on the defensive side of the ball, at times he can be a liability. But Anthony Edwards has to answer the call every single night in the playoffs to score the basketball because we've seen moments from Carl Anthony Towns where. He doesn't answer the call, and he's not this consistent, efficient scorer come playoff time. We saw that happen against the Grizzlies in their first time making the playoffs. Uh, so I, I look at the Minnesota and understand this is a great defense. This is the best defense in the NBA, but when it's not matched with solid, consistent offensive production, that's where I have my concerns. So to me, I'm, I'm going to say my answer is Minnesota because I look at OKC, okay, I think they're a more well-rounded team. I understand they they have youth on their side and they they lack experience, but like Joel, Joel mentioned earlier in the show, top five in offensive rating, top five in defensive rating, number two in net rating. I look at the Clippers. I look at a healthy Clippers team going into the playoffs. That is one of the teams that scares me the most out of anyone in the Western Conference. And of course, the respect to the reigning champ, Denver Nuggets. But Minnesota right now, to me, seems to be that team that I, I find myself doubting the most. 
Yeah, for me, I mean, I'm going to take a different approach than all of you. I'm going to say the team that I feel like has the chance to get upset the most is the Phoenix Suns. The reason I say the Phoenix Suns is because if you look at the, where they are in the seeding, I believe they're the fifth seed right now. They're anywhere going to probably finish between the five Holy and the six. Holy shit. If... Oh, hold on, JC. I'm sorry. I thought... When I read the question... I thought it was top four only. I thought it was top four. Now that I'm reading it, and it just says first round, I rescind every single thing I just said. And I agree with you, JC. Continue. Okay. Okay. Fuck. And wow. you just had to say top four, because that's how I answered the question. Okay. I mean, I... I go ahead, Go, I go on your nope, side. That's, that's me and Drew's fault. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, I say... Like I said, I said the Phoenix Suns. Um, right now, they're... I believe they're the fifth seed. They're going to be a lock anywhere <coughs> between from five to, I believe, seven. If they... Stay five right now. They would play the Clippers. I think the Clippers, I would give the Clippers the edge in that series. If they fall to the sixth seed, they would have to play the defending champion Denver Nuggets. I definitely have the Nuggets winning that series. Um, And just the roster construction of Phoenix. I know Phoenix is very top heavy, but they have one of the worst benches in the NBA. They're not a good defensive team. Bradley Bill hasn't seemed to be healthy this whole season. He's an intricate part to them. Uh, honestly trying to compete for a championship. He hasn't been there, so you don't know how he's going to be in the playoffs with, uh, do with his health. Um, and like I said, role players. I believe Royce O'Neal is probably the only good role player that they have, and you could probably name someone else. It's not popping in my head right now. They're not good at defending the three-point line. They're amongst one of the worst teams that defended the three-point line. They're amongst one of the worst teams at taking care of the basketball in the NBA. They're a bottom five in turnovers. They turn over the ball a lot. And the thing that has always turned me off about this roster and that I was upset that they did not address in the deadline is trying to get a traditional point guard. We know that this team is top heavy with scores, but I feel like in the playoffs when the game gets slower, it's there's just a difference between when a guy can set you up rather than having Devin Booker who has t- has taken a leap as a playmaker this season, sure. but we know Devin Booker's main goal is to get a bucket. Fact. We know Kevin Durant's main goal is to get a bucket. Same with Bradley Beal. I think when the games get slower, I think them not having a traditional point guard that can utilize three, these three scores and get them easy opportunities to score, yep. to score will <clears throat> definitely hinder them. Um, I was very upset that they didn't address that in the, in the trade deadline. I felt like they should have got that. I felt like that was one of the more glaring needs of their roster. So, like I said, I mean... Just seeding, if they play the Clippers, I obviously have the Clippers winning. If they play the Nuggets, I have the Nuggets winning. They're not good at defending three-point line. Like I said, they turn the ball over a lot. They're not a good defense. Their bench scoring is horrible. Bradley Beal's only played 30 games this year. He's a hit or miss when it comes to health. And I just feel like this team right here has the biggest opportunity to get upset in the first round. So if I had to choose a team to get upset in the first round, I'm definitely choosing the Phoenix Suns. This has the making of a team that could get upset. Now, Rev, uh, you wanted JC to keep on this monologue because I'm yeah, expecting rip. you got a similar answer. Yeah. <clears throat> I uh, read the question for sure. Thought it was top four. JC, shout out to you for reading the question and being better than us. Um, <laughs> Joel, did you mean it like yo. top four or, or just anyone in the West? I kind of meant it at anyone really. Yo, Drew, like right. whatever you would consider an upset. Riff, go. If you could revise your answer, you chose the Suns too? Oh, for sure. Damn, we're on the same page. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Suns, I like that. The Phoenix like Suns are, are not a team I could feel confident in. At all. Because I think when you look at upset, right? When you think about upset, I don't think like like who's most... No, when you think about who's most likely to lose, that means you have a team with high standards. Like if the Pelicans lose, I don't have a high standard for them, you know? Yeah. If the Kings lose, I don't have a high standard for them. Suns are going all in, yeah, essentially. Yeah, like if, if like OKC, example, loses to the Clippers if they play the first round, like I wouldn't consider that like a, a, a big upset, you know? So I think like the Suns was a great pick because this is probably the most volatile. to Volatile team in the, like volatile, yeah, volatile, volatile team. team in the playoffs. This is a team that could get hurt, be messed up. You know, offensively they don't shoot enough threes for this type of league. No doubt. You know, defensively Kevin Durant is great for sure. Yeah. But what about the other guys in the playoffs? They are a little bit small, if you ask me. You know, I know KD seven feet, but even then you don't want him to be a full time five at times. You know, and then of course they don't have a traditional point guard. I know Devin Booker plays. Like a point guard, and he's you know he's great, but they I don't think leave. he has that yeah. feel. Yep. He has that you know awareness as a point guard. I think he still struggles with double teams. And listen, Steph Curry still does it. So like it it, it comes with the best of the best. Sometimes you just struggle with with the simple things in the mm-hmm. NBA, you know. And I think you know Bradley Beal hasn't been the guy you wanted him to be either because of injuries or just his play. You know, he hasn't been that third guy for you. In reality, you've had either Nurkic, Grayson Allen step up to the plate and be those consistent guys for you. I think this team, you know, you mentioned. With the Clippers, you trust six people, but like with the Suns, how many do you legitimately trust? 
You know what I'm saying? You trust Devin Booker. Yeah. You trust Kevin Durant. Yep. You trust Beal because he's a star in the regular season, mm-hmm. but even then, he hasn't been there in a long time. You just trust him because the situation, you're a number three guy, so yeah. in reality, it should be a little easier for you. But out, Nurkic, um, you trust, but defensively, do you trust Nurkic in the playoffs? It's never been that. No. You know, it's, uh, before the injury, it was, but after, hasn't always been the same. Mm-hmm. You know, Do you trust Grayson Allen? I in, do. In Milwaukee... He had a series where he 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 went the best. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he went completely. But he's ghost. been awesome this year for that. Yes, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. Fair enough. Playoff time. Yeah, you, have, you, give, him a, you give him a fifty fifty. Royce O'Neal, we've seen it. So I don't even. We not he's even been, the play. He's this. been horrific yeah, in the playoffs, and his defense is hilarious in the playoffs. Yep. He's a he's a. I look oh like God. I'm a lock key, but I'm not. All in the playoffs. So that's yeah. tough. The the Suns just. Yeah, this is it right here. They made this move to like you know to speed up the timeline for Devin Booker to help him get you know get into the finals and win one. And I understand that you know you have Kevin Durant, you have Dev, oh you have Bradley Bill. I get it. I'm not going to knock you for making the move. Most GMs would, you know. But at the same time, you're looking at this team. This is probably the one. Like now that I'm looking at, sorry Minnesota, this is probably the one that I would pick because I think in the situation they're in, fifth seed could drop to six, could climb to four. This is a team that can play a team that legitimately could beat them in the first so round. So now let me ask a question. Because now if we're going to rephrase it a little bit. Let's get to it. Um, your answer is still the Clippers. Of all the teams, it's still the Clippers. Oh, it would be the Suns after. Okay, so yeah. we did mean it in the terms of the top four. He wrote it. No, I'm telling you, let me read what he wrote. I, I read it too. I, it Which says, West playoff yes. team is most likely to be upset in the first round? I just read it. like first. Because then if we said Mavericks, are we too far off base? Me and like, you, but we don't. Yeah, but we don't we, yeah. Me and you are on the same length. Uh-huh. <clears throat> he thinks they can go to the, the moon. We don't That's think they wanted to move. Okay. So we wouldn't okay. pick Dallas. You, know you what think I'm saying? the you think the Timberwolves are frauds though? Cry. I don't think that they're going to the NBA finals. No. If the I, Lakers I matched so. up with them in the first round, you would pick the Lakers to win a series? Listen, objectively you speaking, you should ask him how see, many teams he wouldn't pick I the Lakers. I appreciate the objectively speaking because you know how I it, it's very difficult for me to do that with the <laughs> Los Angeles Lakers. I get that. The only team I genuinely fear in the Western Conference, Nuggets. The Nuggets. They own us. And I would also put the Clippers in there off of history, even though we've had their number this season. I respect the Clippers. I still think that we can go into that series versus the Timberwolves, and we still match up well because Anthony Davis is as versatile as he is. LeBron James, they will not have an answer for him. And with the way that D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reese have been playing, it's going to be very, it's going to be all right for us in that in that series, especially on the defensive side of the ball where I don't know if we'll have that big of issues versus them. McDaniels ain't play last year in the play-in. He didn't. And Nas Reed didn't play either. And you and mentioned more than anything else, their best player did not play well. Yeah, yeah, still had a chance to win. And it was a close ass game. Actually, I were up for majority of the game. They blew it. Torian Prince was literally backpacking. And and now where is he? <laughs> yeah. And did you read the stat? It's funny as hell. When he plays less than twenty four minutes and thirty have a seconds. Great record. I think we're undefeated. Yeah. So stop playing him. But you, uh, Darvin Ham has a crush on him. Or maybe he's, you know. Torian Prince sucks, bro. Man, I wouldn't go as far to say sucks. Nah, man, nah. He's not, he's not good. good. You know what's the crazy he part? He doesn't suck, though. <laughs> Dude, he sucks. You know, I mean, he's super average. average. He's dumb whack. He's, but he can shoot I'm the ball. Honest, he's dumb whack. But anyway, he can shoot I, the ball. You know what's the thing about, about the Lakers it. and like Hachimura. the Warriors Savvy. in Dallas? Rui Hachimura. Hey, put it there. Rui Hachimura. I don't fuck with Prince, bro. I told y'all about Rui. You can't I told y'all about Rui. Because when Rui plays, we're different. You know what? That starting lineup, you're... You guys have a really good record. D'Lo, guys, Reeves, Rui, LeBron, LeBron AD. AD. Good We're, record. That lineup is gas. Talk to me. Sorry, I cut you off multiple times. That's I do okay. apologize. Yeah, we having a great conversation, and I ain't even mad at it. Cool. Um, Dallas, the Warriors, and the Lakers. You know what's interesting about those three teams? That they're probably the one team, like the one the teams where they made, like, and I, I don't even want to throw Dallas in it because I, I don't think Dallas has been struggling <laughs> per se uh-huh. through the regular mm-hmm. season. Like, they've just been dealing with a lot of injuries. For sure. Warriors and the Lakers specifically – where they may not be geared up for the regular season, but if they catch a favorable matchup in the playoffs, we've yeah. seen it. They they, they can literally like it, it starts to get dark. Like the, you know, some teams aren't built for eighty two games. Some teams are just not required. You know, or just don't have the talent to last eighty two games and make the playoffs. Some teams just do enough. Yeah, to but get by. but other teams can just get in. Now you have seven games. You can game plan. You can scheme up, and now you get hot at the right time. And then by the boom, by the bang, look at us. We're in the second. Two round. of the hottest teams in the league. Or the ninth and tenth seed. Yeah, so it, it you know it's interesting for sure. I think Dallas, you know Dallas is a team that can catch somebody sleeping for sure. You know they can definitely go in there. I'm surprised you you ain't been too loud on your Dallas stuff. You know, what do you mean? I think he's been pretty loud. Am I gonna oh. come on the podcast every day, every time we record and just be like Dallas, Dallas? I mean, it's usually what it is. I'll be honest. If my team was forty two and eighteen, 
number one seed in the West. I'd be loud about it every I know. week. He re- you know, that's what I, he said Dallas, but I think he meant Timberwolves. I did. I did. Yep. Because Dallas Minnesota? is every is loud oh, about yeah. it every week. Every week. But if I me, because when the Golden State won the ring, I was loud about it every single week. So if my team was 42 and 18, I'd be talking about it a lot. Well, know? isn't one of your teams second in the West in the OKC? Yeah. You they're, been loud they're like about my fifth team. But no, but like his team. His team's the Warriors. They're like my fifth team. Minnesota. Oh. No, no, no. I'm talking about him saying oh, OKC. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. They are legit like they my are. fifth team. I look at it's the war. If I had to list them, just knowing Riv, Warriors number one. I would throw the Bulls number two, even though he doesn't think that the Bulls are number two. That's fine. Uh, number three, the Clippers. Number four. Hmm. I've been loud about them. I apologize. I'll go number three. Number two, Cleveland. Number yeah. three, the Bulls. Number four, the Clippers. The reason, number five, OKC. The We're reason so why. <laughs> Respect me. <laughs> the reason why Riv is loud about the Cavs is because they, they had they year. they Respect had me. doubt, and then they proved the doubt is wrong. So that's why he's loud about it. I was loud last what year. is there for me to say about Minnesota? Like we know who they are. We don't. We but all you're know who worrying. they are. You're worrying. I I'm feel not, like I'm there's good. a part of you that worries. No, I'm good. Be I'm scared. Good. You're Minnesota confident in the scared. offense. I'm confident Anthony Edwards. How about the team? I trust, that, I, trust, I trust that man with my life. How about the team? Really? Yes. You trust him in the play? Yes. You know what's disappointing? Them, I'm, looking at this, I'm looking at this topic list and no Lakers. It's unfortunate. Why? I was thinking about it. Because you were just doing a lot of this. What else is there to say about them? You do a lot of this on the is, Lakers. Is there a lot to say about the Lakers? <laughs> <laughs> like, what else is there we to say? We can talk about since... Since the start of the new year, D'Angelo Russell has been one of the best point guards in the game. Hey, maybe that could be your this week in the NBA. I, I would love for it to be this. This uh, no, you're this week not. in the NBA. It's not. It's injury. Now, centered, before we move on, um, you mentioned the Suns. Bradley Beal came up in the conversation, and I think Bradley Beal is an interesting case study because um, just two and a half seasons ago, he was averaging 31 a game. I mean, Bradley Beal was that great. But now this year, he's dropped off. So what I want us to do is I'm going to read you Bradley Beal stats. This was going to do Would You Rather. And then I'm going to compare Bradley Beal stats to another player that I will not give you the name. And you will tell me Bradley Beal or the player I just mentioned. With One of the these stats. players is going to be Kyle Kuzma. Just be ready. I'm assuming. I'm just guessing. I just, I just want you guys to do me a favor. Do not look at my computer. I will turn the brightness down so you guys <laughs> do not look. The only so, one that I could see probably right now is Jason. Oh, well, maybe Riff too. So Only this is like. <coughs> this is a Bradley Beal versus Bradley Beal versus this unknown player. I'm going to read you his stats. Tell me if you're taking Bradley Beal or this player. So to start off with Bradley Beal, 18 a game, shooting 49.5% from the field, 36.3% from three, 4.3 rebounds, and 4.5 assists. Okay. This first player comparison is, shoot, is averaging 19 points a night, 45% from the field, 38% from three, five rebounds, and five assists. Okay, that's just for stat watching. You go with player B. Player B. Player B. Player B is Kobe White. Okay. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Kobe! <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> this next player is averaging 20.8 points per game, oh, yep, him. shooting 43.7% from the field, 39.9% from three, 5.3 rebounds, and 4.4 assists. 39 from three? 39% from three. I'll take player B. I won't even think twice about it. Yeah, okay. I'm fine with player, player B. B. Is player this Kyle B. Kuzma? This is Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero, okay. okay. This next player, 18.8 points per game, 46% from the field, 42.5% from three, 4.3 rebounds, 4.5 assists. Is this CJ McCollum? This is CJ McCollum. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a feeling. She's just been hooping this year. Now yeah, the three point percentage was a dead giveaway for me. I, I've been I've been keeping track on the Pelicans. Are you taking CJ? Yeah. CJ's been objectively better than him this year. This next player, he's averaging twenty one point six points per game, shooting forty seven percent from the field, thirty six percent from three, five rebounds, five point six assists per game. How many points per game? Twenty one point <clears throat> six, almost twenty two a night. Mm. What was the percentage? The percentage was 46.7% from the field and 36% from three. Yo, I'm is that Jalen Brown? Is that a... No. Is that, is that, that Jada? Because that, Jalen Brown's averaging 22. Is that Mikael Bridges? No, it's not Mikael. Good okay. God, though. It's not neither of the names that you guys mentioned. Okay. Well, I would take him. And yeah, Player B, probably. I'll take Player B. Player B is DeJounte Murray. Never mind. <laughs> That's your guy. <laughs> nah, I fell you off. fell off. I, I admittedly said I will. <laughs> 
this next player is averaging 19 a game, shooting 54% from the field, 45% from three. Oh, this is easy. Four, is. four rebounds and five assists. J-Dub. 45. Yeah, J-Dub. 45 from three? It's J-Dub. 45% from I three. Give me him. I don't care who it is. I saw J-Dub stat. It's J-Dub, right? This is J-Dub. Of course, yeah. Holy I saw a stat shit. the other day. It's insane. This next Twin. player is averaging 21, three and three. Shooting 44% from the field and 36% from three. All right. Is this Cam Thomas? This is where I go back to Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal. You're going with Bradley Beal? This is Cam Thomas? This is Cam Thomas. You thought you thought I, I you thought he was going to get us. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. The three and three. I'm just like, yeah, nah. This yeah, is, I, knew this it was giving, I knew it was Cam Thomas. This is this is a reminiscent of Cam. The last player is averaging 19, shooting 47% from the field, 37% from three, four rebounds, and four assists. Mm. 36% from three? 37%. Almost thirty eight percent. I'll still take. Bradley I'm gonna Beal. say I'm thinking Bill also here. I'm taking. I'm taking player B. This is Devin Vassell. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Bro heard the name and said, "Fuck no." So dude. all these players <laughs> that I compare Bradley Beal to, whoa, um, we can all pretty much clearly say that they're getting paid much less than Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal this year is making forty six mil. Next year he'll make fifty mil. The year after that, he'll make 53 mil. And then the year after that, he has a player option for 57 oh mil. And for the Suns, he's averaging 18 a game this year. He hasn't Thomas. even been available either. Is he the Michael Thomas of the NBA? <laughs> Michael <laughs> Thomas so of the random. NBA? <laughs> Michael Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> I should have probably mentioned Kyle Kuzma. I just cooked up. Would you rather? I was waiting for Kyle, honestly. His stats are relatively comparable. Yeah, Kyle is, is averaging 22, 6, and 4. 46% from the field, 34% from three. Yeah, yeah I'd come to take uh, Bradley. <laughs> yeah, empty stats. What do you think about this? <laughs> empty stats. Yo, I'm surprised you didn't mention how Jordan Poole fake fried us. <laughs> Been a long season, man. He done with Jordan Poole, right? Huh? You done with Jordan Poole? No, no, no. It's not much to say. Yeah. yeah, the brother got benched on the worst team in the league. Mine, mine just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not much. When you get benched, you kind of just got to go oh, MIA. Zero points. So, what's your would you rather, Ruth? Uh, I actually have a would you rather Bradley Bill. Okay, you do? Third star edition. So, okay. would you rather Bradley Bill? You kind of said a few names, unfortunately. That's cool. But here we go. First name up, J Dub. Taking J Dub. Yeah. I was Williams. Going on, going to the future, no doubt. J Dub. Number two, Porzingis. Porzingis. Kristaps. Porzingis. Porzingis. Number three, Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero. I'm going with Tyler Hero. I, I think this is Tyler not Hero's including awesome. contracts and stuff like this. Is just Hero. Hero. Why do I find myself continuously disrespecting Tyler? I think it's because they went on a run last year without him. They did. But he's, times. But he's been playing relatively good ball. Uh, they went on a run with him his rookie year, too. They did, but then that was that was like his they, lone. They, they, they went on like two it, runs without him. Post, yeah, without him, <laughs> literally. But he's done. He's done it. He's I'm going to go Bradley. I'm going to go Bradley, too. Take it, Rudy Gobert. Rudy Ooh. Gobert. I think I easily go yeah, Rudy. Yeah, Rudy. Rudy and yeah. his impact has been unbelievable. This James year. Harden. James Harden. Taking James Harden. James, James Harden. Harden every Blind day colors. of the week. Drew Holiday. Drew. This is where we get taking to Drew. Fuck. I'm taking Drew. If I need defense, I'm taking Drew. If I need some more offensive fire, I'm taking Bradley. Adjusting to his role. Shout out to Drew Holiday. I think I'll take Drew. I'm going if, Drew. I, if I was the Suns, I would take Drew. So I'm taking Drew Holiday. Yeah, Drew Holiday. Franz Wagner. If Franz found a consistent jumper, this wouldn't yeah, they say he be travels close. every time. He goes I'm going with Bradley Bill. I'm, I'm gonna going, go Bradley nah, also. I'm going with Franz, bro. Franz, Franz has a, has bro. the upside. I'm going with Franz, bro. But Franz's jumper is I'm, bad. I think right now I go Bradley Bill. Uh, Chris Middleton. Nah, Bradley, Bradley Bill. Bill. Chris Middleton. Sucks. I'm going Middleton. <laughs> what? Bradley He's Bill. Ass. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Middleton is fucking ass. Uh, Jared Allen. I've seen him be a number Jared two in a championship winning team. That shit was a while long ago. That was a minute ago. It's Jared. when he beat your guys, unfortunately. Yeah, we got hurt. Jared Allen. <laughs> it's true. Uh, sorry, that's when you love Chris Middleton's nuts. averaging 15 a game this year. Yeah. He's, you really take him. Well, he's a number three. three. He's a number three. He's number three. He's been averaging deal, 15 the last two seasons. Bro, he's whack, bro. Yeah. Jared Allen, I'm taking. Uh, Jared Allen. Yeah, hell yeah. Jared Allen, for sure. That's close. That is close. Um, it is close, but Allen's been open, man. I- I'll go Jared Allen. And then the final name, Derek White. Derek White. Derek White is the second best, if not the Derek best White player all day. in the NBA. I'm going on Bradley Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Bradley Bill was on the Celtics. That's not so a fact unfair. that John Tate. All right, it's a good point. Derek right. White so easily was crazy. Well, like, again, like adjusting he's been to better. Role, he's been more available this a, year too. That's the answer. He's been better in his role for sure. And he's a way Bradley better. Bradley a better player. He's a way better defender. 100%. Bradley Beal is a better player, but in oh, terms yeah, of individual player, yes. but yeah, but this is in terms of as a third option or whatever, right? Fourth option. Now I'm taking. So, if you're the Suns, you'd rather have Derek White than Bradley Beal as your third option? 
Shit, the answer might be yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna take. You know what? I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna take it that far. That's the thing. I won't take it that far. I'll go Bradley Bill still. I won't take it that far. That's all the names. Let's go. Would you rather Riv? Uh, this next topic is about Victor Wembanyama. Uh, do you think he's having the best rookie season in the history of the league? It's arguable. It's arguable for the defensive impact. I mean, the fact that. Over his, what is it, the last five, six games, the, like the guy has aver- averaging almost <laughs> five blocks. Defensive no, impact. but, no, I mean, so he leaves the defense blocks, is amazing. He's averaging three blocks. In yeah. the no, the blocks. S- on the yeah. season, he's averaging yeah, three yeah, blocks. Just, but, but I think in the month of February, he's averaging five, five blocks. Yeah. It's no. hard to say that because like, they have like 20 No, they have wins. no wins. Uh, Their team sucks. I, I look at Michael Jordan. Good. He averaged 28 in his rookie season. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that feels like an obvious answer. Uh, I know you guys don't credit him at all, but Wilt Chamberlain was MVP and Rookie of the Year. <laughs> what? Yeah. See, yeah. shit like that, bro. Well, I'm yeah, just going to say MVP, go. bro. Like, I, I literally that. said, I know how you feel about him. I prefaced that before. He won MVP? Kareem, yeah, he, MVP and Rookie of the Year. Come on, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. This guy's not real, bro. Um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was amazing in his first year. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna go Michael Jordan as the best rookie season. Uh, I feel like up until uh, I mean he he came in and immediately was a top ten player in the league at the absolute worst. Uh, so I'm looking at Jordan as the best rookie season of all time. Uh, but Wemby has just been amazing. His ability to to obviously shoot the basketball. Luka? His Luca's interesting. No, I think Victor's. Blake? Rookie season was better. Blake? Blake is a fraudulent rookie year, but it's a rookie year nevertheless. Oh, that's like Chet, you don't so say that Chet's with Ben. Agreed. No, but I agree. But with, you don't say that with Ben Simmons. He really cared rookie. about Ben in his second year uh, on, or rookie year Magic? on. Magic? I thought Donovan should have won rookie of the year. Oh, we're here. Magic? Oh, chip, fair. Chip. Fair. Chip. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that doesn't count. That doesn't chip. count, though. Because what? he came in with an elite team. Nah, it, I'm going to say why. Yo, you're you're, you're counting team success with regular season rookie. What was he his regular season as a rookie? Nineteen points and uh, you could argue Larry. You could Victor. argue that Larry was better than him. Nineteen the points, uh, eight rebounds, seven assists, uh, second in the league in steals. Yeah, you could compare that to Victor. But then he, you can't, you can't, like, yo, in the finals, he no. He I'm saying, but like, that's we're talking about like. You know. I mean, I think that's. But like, he was a big part of that, though. No, I'm saying yeah, but I thought we were just talking about like rookie. Best well, rookie, rookie seasons is in totality. So wait, though, yeah. Right? So we if we factor in the playoffs and the finals, yeah, I'm taking Magic. Larry's rookie. Larry's rookie season was twenty one. Good rookie. Forty percent from three and over ten rebounds a game. Oh no, he had a yeah. great. Yeah. I just great like what are we factoring playoffs? For I mean, rookies? honestly, I'm gonna say why not? Well, well it you want us to forget though. about it does. what Magic well, did for, for it, someone it does. like Magic? Johnson, he won the does. MVP he for the finals. Like, he won finals MVP. He bro. did, but he jumped on a team that was literally like the best in the world. But they, but they weren't. They weren't championship. Yo, he had to play. Did he have to play center one game because my my man's Kareem was hurt? Yes, he did. Forty five, seventeen, ten. I don't know, man. It was just different at that time. I don't know. Listen, I I'd think rather that, have that rookie year. Victor Wembanyama does not have an argument for being the greatest rookie ever. In the last twenty years, he does. No, he's the greatest we've ever seen. When we look, he's amazing. <laughs> when we look at LeBron James, Blake Griffin, Luka Doncic, I oh, think Blake, those are the nice. those are the best rookie seasons the last twenty years. You can argue uh, Carmelo's in there somewhere too. He had a great rookie season. Yeah, he did. I think Wemby, what he's doing from an eye test standpoint is are we probably more Dame impressive. In this conversation? What no. the fuck? He's the only unanimous rookie of the year. Who cares? Dame had a great what rookie year. What was his year? class? That was with Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis averaged twelve points. No, AD won def- a rookie. Of the year. He did. Nope. The Not only Dame. unanimous Dame rookie of the year was Damian Lillard. Andy Davis averaged 12 points. I only yeah. ask. I only ask. He's the only unanimous. Having a better year than Luka. Can I, I can't ask. Yeah. I think Victor over Luka, over Blake Griffin. When we get into the ben. historical guys, like Will Chamberlain, even Wes Unsell Jr., Wes Unsell <laughs> yeah. won MVP his he rookie did. year. Facts. You know, Magic Johnson. They don't even come in as rookies for real. We be honest. They no, came facts. in like. The four year college. That's a big difference. Because Magic, Magic was 20 as a rookie. So I, I get that. So I feel like with the argument. older players, Victor is not much of a case. But in the modern era, I think he's the best that I've seen. You know, 21 and 10, he's not even playing 30 minutes a night. And it's four stocks a game, four plus stocks a game. He averaged five blocks a month in February. From an eye test standpoint, he's one of the most impressive players that I've seen in my life. So I, I feel like the wins might not be there, but the impact is there for sure. All right. When is Victor best in the world? Three years. Yeah. We're, we're speeding up the timeline. It was five. Now we're back to three. I'm not against it. I moved. He's amazing. Moved, you know, it felt he's like doing he's doing amazing. Drills. He, he did the three and the turnaround. You see him do that fucking yeah. street day. Nah, bro. He's you know, Drew, it's almost like a... Right. It's almost like the Victor Wembanyama and the Chet Holmgren debates 
you know, stopped happening really. Oh yeah, they're cooked. For sure, cooked out the. I've been stopped like, down. Yeah. From the start, I knew, I knew. Chad had a good better, like bro. month too, but now it's been like it's chill over. out. Yeah, bro, I was mad the, disrespectful. He's unbelievable. Are you? Why are he, you dissing Chad? Aren't you OKC okay, guy? No, I'm not dissing Chad. It's just you came in here, and a lot of people was were adamant, adamant that Chad that. was like on his level. Yeah, but you acting like it was like a at the time it was crazy. It's the ball handling we're that like separates. A, we're like a month removed from that time, bro. We're probably like a month and some change, bro. It's still clear, not man. a lot of time. Wemby. A month and some yeah, change is like 10 games. 10, 15 games. I had Wemby winning. That's easy. not a lot. Bro, easy. all you had to do was watch that game when it was U.S. versus France back in the day. And, and you bring up and, that one, one more game. That game one more no, time. not that one versus Scoop. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about that no, game. No, when yeah. Chet and, and, and Wemby actually faced off in the, no. the oh, men's. Oh, oh, oh. I know what you're talking about. I just think it was it was never fair to compare Chet to him because... When Benyama's generation. What do you think? You're cooking or something? I never said I was cooking. I'm oh. just saying you was adamant at one point that Chet well, no, was on his at, level. In, at a point in the season, like, like, Chet, Chet was Chet playing was better than him. He at a point in the season, Wemby. yeah, he was. No, Chet, no at that no, time, but he Chet wasn't, was hooping. And the efficiency he was, was hooping. Yeah. He was number he one in rookie of the year at that he time. He was. So what are you doing? You thought you cooked. You didn't cook. No, it's because Hell. you changed your opinion so quickly. Yeah, I know. Just like you changed your opinion with OKC so quickly. What do you mean? Joel, let it be. Don't be the pot calling the kettle black here. You, so he you just, shouldn't be. You should. You be of that. all people should let. Hey. Right message, wrong messenger. <clears throat> Cooked. Valid. Should I be the one to call him out? Some change. You, you better watch it. Don't respect him. I got new information. I change. That's your. That's your. That's your line. I got new information. I change. So you're crediting me with that. that. That's what you say all the time. That's your line up here. Listen, at least I that is what you say. All I'm saying. All I'm saying though is that you was adamant. That's it. And then the conversations. But well, so was now. the rookie ladder. The rookie ladder, I mean, we always knew that Wemby was going to But at win. a point, yeah. the efficiency was was not close between the two. I feel like we always knew Wemby yes. was going to win. Nah, I mean, what, it, the rookie took, of the year? Yeah, yeah. it was it already took, written. How, how many it games was did it take Wemby to get adjusted to the NBA? Started. I don't even feel like it took much of an adjustment. I'll say 15 games. After 15 games, he was here. They I had think. him at, at a minute restriction. Yeah, they had, yeah. yeah. That's really it. The like, minute restriction was Did he have a 5 by 5 game? He did. Here's a better question. How many big men are you taking over Wemby right now? It's like maybe three, two. I'm not taking Joel Embiid over him. Oh, so two. Wait, are you taking a? Are you not taking AD over? Uh, 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 what going forward? Moving forward, I don't know. AD when he faced against Wemby, it's food. Wemby I, played great <laughs> too. <laughs> it was food. Yo, I'm not gonna hold you. Know, it's, it's the Joker yo, flat out. Yo, yeah, this yeah, is right. Joker, listen, listen, Anthony yo. Davis. I honestly thought we were going to respect Yo, Embiid. Rib. I think bro, you should. Rib, rib, rib. Wemby against the Lakers had 27, 10, they 8, 5, like and 5. Times. He did. Bro, 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 bro. What has AD done every you know single time he's matched at up this table right now? He's killed him. Yo, Yo, didn't Joel Embiid give Wemby 70? No, he destroyed Wemby. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you forgot about that shit, right? You <laughs> forgot about no, he gave him 70, though. He was on his head. I remember that shit. Nah, word is born. Yes. is insane. No, he destroyed Yo, that's a forgotten 70 ball. People forget about that. It wasn't even Crazy. Yo, I remember You're that. funny as fuck. Yo, he was killing him, yeah, he bro. Was it wasn't even him. like a team thing. It was just like MB was just destroying him. That yeah. shit was bad, so, bro. Three centers. You think Joel Embiid saw our video with uh, Victor Wembanyama versus, and we took him over? And I don't Embiid? know. Holy and he might have seen it because yo, he really fried him. You looking at I the would, game logo? I mean, I'm, I'm oh. looking at AD versus. Yo, he dropped seventy on him. Bro. Moving forward, though, would you not take Wemby over MB? Moving forward, yes. With all the injuries, even right now, thirty with years concerns? old. Like if yeah, you're the Sixers, yeah. you taking Wemby? You taking? I'm MB. just talking about like as a player. Yeah, as a player, right well, now, taking Wemby. Like, this, this but going, uh, going forward, going forward, yeah, Wemby. So your question sure. is, who's a better player? Like who? What centers are better players? Yeah, I'm gonna keep it hundred, like flat out face right now. Who's a better player than Wemby? It's Nikola Jokic, for sure. Joel Embiid, AD, um, Anthony Davis. I think that's. Yeah, that's it, bro. I'm not taking some bonus. I, I hate you. Nah, hell no, hell. I hate no, you. No, no, Sabonis is not. I love being the death. That's my dog. He's not better ben than about, Wemby. It's close. It's ben close, but it's close. like I'm stretched. I don't know. Nah, I'm bro. taking Wemby too. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> taking Wemby like, too. It's no slight to Bam, but it's like Bam's Wemby nice. different, bro. I don't know. Chris Osprezingus. Good God. I thought about Chris Stops. Nah, I'm taking Wemby. B. Wemby's a better respectfully. Yeah. Alpine Shangun. What the Let's fuck? be serious, wait, please. Wait, wait, what do you mean? You're trolling. What? Let's yeah, be you're serious. Trolling. Right he actually clears He's talking about right now who's a better player. He, he cleared him on day five. <laughs> Wemby cleared, cleared on... Singoon on day five. Okay. Uh, AD has destroyed He cleared him on day season. five. Yeah, Wemby cleared yeah, well, Singoon on day five. Uh, and you were still Embiid making Chet and, and Wemby arguments. I, Chet, you could argue he's better than Singoon. Chet does not clear Singoon. I didn't say he cleared. I didn't say he cleared. Singoon's better than Chet. I didn't say he cleared. Right now, Singoon's not better than Chet? I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, Chet is a better basketball player than the I. The defensive it, game bro. is nuts. Bro, it shows three. It's it is, nuts. No, it's insane. It's nuts. It's drastic. Bro, you heard? It shows three. That's it. That's it. Three. No, we're cooking. That's it. Chet or single? Who's better? Yeah. Like right now, today? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. That's just a funny ass question, though. It's just like, like, you don't know. It is a funny ass question. But it's, no, what is it? Disrespectful no, 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 to say no, Chet? It's no, not disrespectful. No funny shit, though. No, for real, for real, for real. It's just it's literally those three that are only better than Wimby right now at yeah. the center position. That's the easy it. answer is not Singoon. Let me what ask you a question. Like Singoon versus Chet? That's not easy. Let me ask you a question. Are we calling Giannis a big? better. Are we calling Giannis a big? Giannis, you can put Giannis him in there. Center. Okay, okay, but then if we put Giannis, 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 yeah, better. Giannis is What's better. What's Singoon better than Shredder? Let's throw away defense because Shredder Passing. clears that. Passing. Passing. What else? He's a better scorer. He's a better post He's a better post scorer. He's not a better shooter. Shangoon's improved from the mid range this year. Nah, he's not, shooting, a better shooter. He's not a better shooting shooter. Shooting is it's Chet. Yeah, shooting is Chet. So then how do you always do that? But I think if. if you got to break are, it down to three. Is he a better levels. rebounder? No, right? No, no. Sh- Shangun is better. Sh- Shangun has sure, the rebound. Sure, because yo, uh, Chet's averaging a double double. No, nah, I would say I would say Shangun is a rebounder. He's a better rebounder. Shangun's average twenty one nine and five. He is. Yeah. That's is he tough. A rebounder? Like Chet's literally a, a it, modern it, big that wondering. can shoot I the ball. The offensive yeah. rebounds and he can and defend that. the rim. I like looking at all you. that type of stuff. You can you can model your offense around Shangun. Wow, like you can create an offense around him, and he can be the he can be the funnel of the offense. He can be the main Yo. scorer and the Shangun passer of it six too. offensive rebounds Maybe. a game. Would they, how successful what? would they be? It might be defensive rebounds. I don't know. That sounds like too much. Oh, that does yeah, sound like too much. How, how, successful, how, crazy. how successful Yo, would they be? That, well, let's see right now. Let's see what did. their offense is right now. Oof, I'm talking about, about like from a win standpoint. Oof. I mean, they're a playing team, and I think they kind of exceeded expectations. Who's, 20, a playing team? Who's a playing team? The Rockets are out of it. No, they're, they're, they're gone. They're way out. Yeah, they're 12th in the Western Conference right now, so you're right. But they were for a majority of the season. We, they're 6th in, defen- <laughs> <they're six laughs> in defensive rating. They're huh? 24th in offensive yeah. rating. So their offense hasn't been that Also, oh, Mr. Hub can't do it. Yeah, but Mr. Over the Jazz. but Mr. Hub is with... Brother, also, he's a bonus. It's okay. He's a bonus. Don't disrespect Look him. Look at the players <laughs> around him. Though. He's okay. It's Respects okay. Jalen Green is, has been inefficient No, I'm talking about. I'm talking about archetype. That's it. That's that's what I'm talking about. Not as, like archetype. He's that, a Sabonis like player. And Sabonis is better than Shet right now. Sure. <laughs> that's a, that's sure. easy. But nah, Sabonis yeah, is better than Sangoon. He is. But Sangoon are better than Shet. Sh- Sam- Sangoon is better than Shet right now. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. I know it's you got a, you got a little fetish Chet. for Sangoon, but no, he's what do you not. Mean? No, it's, he got I always, a little you've always hated on Sangoon. <laughs> bro, Chet, for Gears the defensive before, yes. impact, he averages almost three bucks a game, bro. Chet? Yes. Yeah. Bro, it's not yeah, cool. I'm not saying. I'm taking Chet. Of too. course, I know Chet's defense is like that. But then the offense is also. I'm pretty sure Goon has not been a terrible defender efficient. this year. He's actually been a really good defender. But this that year. has nothing to do with the fact that Chet is just. <laughs> he so has not been on Chet's level as a defender. He is, he is. This okay. is his first year. And Shangun, what he can do on offense, I think as is more than what Chet. He can. He's not just a post scorer. That's not it? just what he is. He can. He can do a lot of things offensively. Talk about scoring. That one, that one leg he can, jumper. He can do you. more than just post score. That one leg he's jumper. He's a great roller too. Oh, I mean, he's a he's a big. I expect that. Shet's a great roller. Uh, Shengun got it on rebound. Shet's also a yeah, pick and sure. pop. Shet's yeah, a pick and pop machine. I know Shengun will improve. Shet's that just the modern big that you kind of want. Like Shengun is a as a post scorer he that is. can't protect the rim. He is. There's nothing wrong with it, Joel. He's a Sabonis play archetype. It's nothing wrong with that. But you you ain't gonna get the Jokers all the time. No, you know, you're just no, not. You're not. But you could get a few shots. I mean, you didn't think Joker was gonna be what Joker was when he None of us did. Was that year? Did any second round pick? <laughs> did I, I maybe outside of Jokic Joe Star, but honestly, I don't know if he thought he'd be this. <laughs> yeah, nobody second round pick. He no. just went to MVP. Second round pick. Nobody expected that. <laughs> you thought you cooked to get him? No, bro. It's a shots. No, it's not super. cooking. It's just right now, Shangun is better than Shangun. You're saying bro. right now, but it's like where? Like I don't, I don't think I don't. I don't know. I don't. Is he like? I don't know. Yes, I think he is. I don't as know. A, as a two way player, no, he's not. Who would you rather have as a two way player? That the two way big such or a, the post score? Yo, funny, if I'm a <laughs> yo, if, if, if I'm a Nets fan, you're getting fouled. <laughs> no, if I'm a Nets fan, I'm taking chat, bro. Not, I'm taking chat. Don't let him get fouled. It's not even disrespect. No, no, it's foul. not even disrespect. <laughs> it's just like who would you rather have? Honestly, like generally speaking, you would really like take single. Generally speaking. You won't. It's, it's okay. I, Th- this whole thing stems from who's a better player a right now. I think Shangun's a better player right now. I would think so. Like if you're telling me who will, who I, would I rather player. have like long term, I would rather have Chet. Well, I mean the aging is off, so it's not yeah. a. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, Next year, Chet is just, it won't be like clear stamp that he's better than Sangun. I, I think so too. But I'm just wondering. Like, I don't think it's clear. It could stamp. be as think, soon as next I think season. That, it's yeah, not no, close. It There's could be another as soon as April. Playoffs. Literally April, May. We can see Shet do some shit and we will take him over to Ngu. I'm ready now. But yeah, like, if you want to wait until the playoffs, that's fine. 
Okay, I'm glad that at least there's one player I know can get a lot from you. Because wow. it hasn't been SGA, so I'm, I'm glad. I'm a fan of just Kentucky. You can never take that from me. You can never, ever, Dude, ever take so that much question from marks Been about a fan him, of like. him since Kentucky. Then when he got drafted to the Clippers, I was there. Then when he got traded, I was there. You just got here in 2022. I've been here. <laughs> I've been had tweets I, about him. What I've about? been oh here. God. What are you since, talking about? I've Stop. been here since Kentucky as a I don't freshman. Hear about the tweets. You can never take that from me. I have 2021 tweets, bro. Oh, 20. I'm sorry. He, I have, he wasn't have, a freshman have, in 2021. We had segments <laughs> dating back talking okay. about SGA. I mean, no, I didn't think SGA was going to be this. But you know what? I'm glad that everything is aligning for us to actually be on the same team you know because, you, you've been here you since know, 2021 I, i've been here I was since talking, 2017 I was talking about, drew yeah 2017 yeah because i got a lot of stock in sga being great in the playoffs and okc advancing the playoffs and doing some things uh you have been hesitant on that but now for you to be right on this shangun chet thing chet need to ball out so our, our interests are kind of aligning my, right now my, my stance has always been i try to stay as consistent as possible no matter who i'm talking about so even if it is my favorite player, even if it is one of my, my dogs, I try to stay as consistent as possible. But with this Shets and Goon shit, brother, it's, it's just clear as day. You watch both of them play, you know who's better. Shangun has outplayed Chet when they've played. Okay. I'm not moved so like, by it. I've watched Kyrie outplayed Steph. I, mean, I but, know who's better. But, <laughs> so I'm like, what, what that that, 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 that's that a bit different, though. Like, I, What's you, different? The stats this year, Shangun got better stats. Okay. So, and then and then right. you look more opportunity and then, though, right? And then at and then yeah. in games, playing, playing behind the MVP, behind the MVP, playing playing MVP. and J Dub, and J Dub's average he's a 19. walking, bu- he's literally a walk. Yeah, I walk yeah, in, I get buckets. Hold yeah. up, at the same time, while Shingun there could, with while like there, rookies, while there could true, be more true, opportunity true. for you, it could also be harder for you to get yours because it's, it's easier for Chet to get his baskets off a fucking MVP than Shangun to have to create everything for himself. One hundred percent. But also, if Chet couldn't shoot, he wouldn't be able to get the baskets he gets. I mean, yeah, that's a so. Let's swap him real quick. What would the OKC still be top two? In the West, if you had single, no, yes, you're lying. No, they yes, they lying would. They, they wouldn't be a top, top ten in the West. They wouldn't be a top ten nah, defense. They would, Houston is a top a ten defense, defense with Shingun. But, it, it, but it's no. not. I feel like that's tough. I feel like a lot of their defensive impact for OKC has been because of the okay. rim protecting of Chet Holmgren. Now, the defense, Rockets' though. defense is good. Sengun is a, a part of, of that. They players. have a lot of them. Hold up. Because this their this defense is, gets better when Sagoon off the court. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. This conversation that's, is over. That's him they watch, become elite. That's him. They Bro become elite. Watch the Rocket game. They're just going straight You're lying. You're lying. Amos Thompson's looking there. At I watch. Uh, Cam yeah. Whitmore's there. Now I watch. Look, I call him. Look at these. I call him, guys. <laughs> what do you mean? What am I lying about? They the are, Rockets do you have a top you don't, 10 defense. You, you lied on him not watching. He watches. No, no, no. I'm saying the Rockets do have a top 10 defense. No, I didn't tell you lied about that. No, I didn't tell you lied about that. This year, OKC is fifth in defensive rating. Last year, they were 14th with no center uh-huh. you're telling me you don't at he least just he drunk. drunk them into <laughs> one of the five. best defenses in the league they're he did now. that he did and that and it's rookie season it was it they're was leaves elite. from everybody but what i'm saying is that wow okc i'm not trying to diminish check no, no, and not. y'all I know are not. not listening their My defense their defense last year with no center play zero nada across the board jalen williams like terrible center play was 14th best defensive rating chet improved that of course, yep. he has a big impact in that. They're now a top five defense rating. You're not going to tell me that if they plop in a Shen Goon, Joel. their defense mm-hmm. does not get better to a top 10 unit like they are this year. Well, question. The Rockets were 29th in defense last year, and now they're six. You think Shen Goon did that, or you think a collection of getting players in the draft, Ime Udoka, primarily the Number main one. reason, Fred and them Andy. buying in on defense? Fred well, Andy. I never said no, Shen Goon. Brooks, too. I never, Brooks. Said, mm-hmm. I never said no, Shen Goon. I'm asking. I know. I, I'm answering. I never said Shangun is the reason for their defense. No, That's number no, one. No, no, no. Number one is Ime Udoka. For sure. But even then, when you have defensive guards around a player, guards are not going to impact the defensive rating collectively. It's a collective thing when it comes to defensive mm-hmm. rating. It's a buy-in. Steven Salas had essentially no system in Houston. He didn't have anything going for them. Fred Van Vliet has helped. Dylan Brooks has helped. The Rockets were a top 10 defense before Amen Thompson came back from his injury, and they were playing sound. Shingun has played good defense this year. Is there area for improvement? Yes, but he is holding his own. The player that's not been holding his own has been Jalen Green. That's why Jalen Green, at the, end of the, at the end of games, doesn't play no more. He gets benched. Shingun a few times has been benched on the fourth. Yes, I know. Because of his defense. But, e, but Ime 
has made a point of emphasis to get that side of him better. I'm letting you know, and Chet has, has been never better. been benched because of his defense. We're not going to argue Shangun versus Chet defensively because we know Chet is better defensively. That's not the argument. That's clear. The argument is that you said, what are what what is the defense with Shangun? I mean, we're seeing a defense with Shangun right now in, in Houston who's playing a majority of minutes for them. He's the highest in minutes per game, and they're a top 10 unit in the league. Yes, but they're also an elite defense when he's off the court. Okay. So I don't think that's the main I don't think he's the main So what's of that. so what's OKC's I'll, defense when Chet is off the court? All right, so now let me let me get if if it's if I win this, we're done, right? But I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna look up <laughs> we Chet. We do, because we we have to move. When he's on, they're elite. When he's off, they drop off, they get better by one point. It's one thirteen when he's on, one twelve when he's off. So they get better on defense when he's off. That's interesting. Brother man, it's one point. So now it doesn't matter at all because if like it's one it's, point, I know it's not one point. I know it's one point. Shangun so was six. I, I'm not making it a big deal though. But I'm just saying, like you made this whole thing about Chet's defensive impact being if out of the moon. I needed to hear it go up. Better defense. I needed to hear it go up. I mean, I guess, bro. I mean, Shangun when he's on, they're one fifteen. When he's off, they're one oh nine. I just, I just hope you know this whole thing started because I think Shangun is a bit better than Chet. No, I, ne- it's a, it's I never. A, it's a, I, no, I was never disrespectful. No, I didn't say you were. But it's funny because they're both both of their offense when they're when they're both on the court offensively, and then when they both come off, it's the same drop off, four points. It's the same. So this he does more of this offensively. You wanted to see more. Listen, brother. If Shet don't clear him today, if Shet don't clear him tomorrow, Shet's gonna clear him in April or May. It, you know. I think off of what I've been watching, I think Shangun does more for Houston's offense than Shet does. For he, he has to. I know he has. He to. has to. I don't think that makes him a better player, though. <clears throat> okay. I, I, think I think he his is game a better just, player right now. I think now. his game just requires. He's, but but he's you're right. I mean, game. listen, in the playoffs, if Chet shows out, I think he will play really well. I think Chet is 100% more valuable than Sengun. In the modern era, yes, you can argue. So, I, I, all I said, I never said Chet was never not going to be better than Sengun. No, no, no. All wait, I said no. is that right ta- now, I think yeah. Sengun's a little bit and better. I, and I'm is saying, that, that's all I said? I heard you. No, but I'm saying right now, Chet's better. That's I all also, I'm saying. I also feel similar. The whole table thing. Chet's better. Shut Sengun, man. Come on. <laughs> I fuck with Shangun. He's supposed to be Sabonis 2.0. On you. He, he is are, Sabonis you are 2.0. Falling off on, Shet's going to clear on, on Sabonis Shet. in like two, three I, years. Uh, I fear that. Huh? Shet's going to clear Sabonis in about two, three Give years. Give Sabonis some time, all right? He's, he's in his prime. That's cool. <laughs> he's in his prime. <laughs> you just you love Sabonis, so I get that. That's my dog. But Shet's He's one of my stamps into Shet's saying I know Shet's going to be ball. better than Sabonis. Well, listen, is. we don't know if the Kings are going to make the playoffs or not this year. If they do, though. I mean, Sabonis got to have a great playoff series to redeem what he, what he wasn't last year. He went against Draymond. It was terrible match. Kavali got suspended. Yeah. And remember the game. We looked it up. It's true. Yeah. This week in the NBA, do you want to talk about D'Lo, Drew? Uh, I really don't want to talk about the Lakers uh, just because they've been doing a lot of the talking for me. Uh, uh, credit to my dogs. Last 10, 7, and 3 record. Uh, of course, since the, the start of the new year, D'Angelo Russell averaging 22 points per game, uh, 45% from from the field over 40% from three point land. He's been absolutely orgasmic. Um, but I, I, what I want to, <laughs> what I want to highlight actually is unfortunately two injuries. Uh, well, I'll, I'll highlight one. If you guys want to talk about the other, but the first one's going to be Mr. Russell Westbrook. Unfortunately he did. It is confirmed. He does have a fractured hand. He's going to be out indefinitely. Uh, but it's unfortunate because he was really finding himself in his role over there in Los Angeles, and they were playing some great winning basketball. He's really adjusted to to what Tyron Lou wants him to do and is trying to get out of him onto that second unit. He took the biggest backseat of any player on the Clippers, Nuts. and he's one of the big reasons why they've been able to really transform themselves in, into one of the best teams in the Western Conference. Obviously, his impact is not as big as the Harden, the, the Kawhi, the Paul George. That's an obvious answer. But off the bench... He was giving them some solid minutes, playing some solid defense, and it's unfortunate to see him go out like this. Hopefully, he's back in time for the playoffs. My this week in the NBA, you know, I haven't really been talking about this team all that much this year, but they're always my dogs. And, you know, I fuck with y'all, man. I rock with y'all. It's Sacramento Kings. That's nah, me, you're that, done. That's Malik you're Monk. 39-point game yesterday. Yo, shout out to the Kings, You saw the man. comment section talking about it? Be like, isn't that something the Laker yeah. fan has to step up for the Sacramento man, Kings? Man, it was one comment, man. You yeah, know, they got Sac you. Town knows what it is. You know, I was there when nobody supported. Now, you see, you see how he does this the day after he has a nice tweet go off about how Malik Monk's the sixth man of the year. He's getting back to his roots. He understands he has way too many Kings fans to let him down. You know, because the, the thing about it, Drew, is that, you know, last night De'Aaron Fox didn't play. He didn't. 
And uh, Anthony Edwards left at halftime to go witness the birth of his uh, child. You know, shout out to Anthony Edwards. Of course, he can congrats, do no wrong Kim. in my eyes always. No way. Malik Monk, 39-point game. It happened in the third quarter. He went off because most of his points came in the second half and in overtime. You know, Rudy Gobert gave him a slight shove. And Malik Monk talked some smack back to him. And ever since that moment, Malik Monk just went on a complete heater. And I think this year he is the sixth man of the year. I'm, I haven't taken a look too much at the candidates and stuff, but... Last year, it was a tight race between Quickly, Brogdon, and Monk. Uh, I think this year, Monk deserves it, though. And I think Malik Monk has been so crucial to the Kings. And listen, Joe, I don't think you were off the mark. I, I think if you're a Kings fan, you should have expected a jump. You know, you should make the playoffs again and should probably get to the second round this time around. Yep. But uh, the Western Conference is tougher. It's great. And this team is not a team that made any sizable leaps. So bonus has been better. Fox has dropped off from what he's been a, li a little bit, just a little bit, from last year. Keegan Murray has improved as a defender, though Malik Monk has improved also from last year. For sure. But when you're in the West and you go up against these teams that have two star players, superstar players sometimes in the West, you need to have more than just two all-star level players and, and some good role players around them. And the Kings, for, mo for, the, for the most part, they just don't have the talent to keep up with most teams on most nights. But they have still been playing fantastic this year. For sure. And I think... If they don't make the playoffs or if they finish as a playing team in the seventh, eighth spot, it is a testament to how loaded the West is. But this still is a very fun team to watch when they get going. And Malik Monk showcased that last night. <clears throat> well, I was going to talk about, you know, the last couple games for the Warriors, specifically Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga. But uh, just got this notey that Steph is questionable for tomorrow with mm -hmm. a knee injury. Hurts. Really, Ooh, that's really, tough. Really does hurt, uh, but he, you know, he's been a little bit tired and dead leg. So I, I wouldn't mind having him a little rest day. We've been on the road for you know for some time now. You know, we don't make excuses though. We just go out there and get W's like other teams. But for sure, um, Steve Kerr finally put Moses Mooney in the lineup, man. And uh, you know, watching it, you know, live against the Knicks, you know, watching him completely clamp Jalen Brunson was a truly amazing thing. How to was see. the game, bro? It was great. Um, we got some good seats. You know, we were definitely faded, for sure. Nice, we were up there on nice. cloud 50. <laughs> um, but, you know, start the game, Steph came out hot. You he know, did. He, the three for three, looked amazing. Eight rebounds yeah, in the Yeah, first. he was going crazy. Sorry. But <laughs> the thing that that had me, like, excited was had Moody in the lineup, right? So, you know, you know Frank. Frank's a big Moody guy. Loves Moody loves to death. Moody, yeah. Had Moody in the lineup. So I'm like, Frank, all right, let's see how it looks. He was like, you know, he was like, Moody's going to start on Brunson. So I'm like, ah, right, let, let, let's see what, you know what I'm saying? Let's see how this looks. You know, I'm a little nervous. You know, Brunson's a little quick, but I just, he was there. Every play, every possession, fighting over every screen. Loved the game plan we had. You know, the double double Jalen Brunson or hard hedge it. You know, Thibodeau had two bigs out there that can't shoot. Hilarious. So we just doubled those. Draymond is there. Kaminga was there. Like, the defense, for the first time I've seen in a while, was just connected one through five. Even when guys came subbed in, everybody was connected. Um, the game was amazing, though. It was pretty much the Warriors had control of it, but you had some nice moments. Dante had some moments. You know, then you had Brandon had some moments. Steph had some moments. Draymond had some moments, you know. So it was a great game, great vibe, great energy, you know. Um, Moody played against the Wizards. He had another big game. Him and Kaminga, you know, Kaminga said he was excited for Moody to get in the lineup. And Kaminga's just been great his last 20, 25 games. You know, he's just stepped in as our next best scorer. But Moody just always being ready, always being prepared. You know, you got to give him credit for that. And just always being ready for the moment, coming in, defending at a high level, you know, scoring at a high level, hitting the three when needed. And shout out to Draymond Green for just, and he talked about it, just being that leader for these young guys, you know. I know he gets a lot of slack. And sometimes it's with justice because he does do some bullshit a lot of the times. But he is a great leader. He has been the guy for them, these young players. So shout out to the Warriors, man. We climbing, man. Uh, so <laughs> for my this week in the NBA, uh, Kevin Durant recently became ninth all-time in the NBA scoring oh. list. Um it's a goal, man. Uh, he's about 4,000 points away from Michael Jordan if you round everything up. To get there, he would have to pass Shaq, Wilt, and Dirk to get to Michael Jordan. Um, so just a quick question for you guys. Do you guys feel like Kevin Durant is going to reach top five scoring in NBA history? It's going to be a challenge for the fact that we've three. seen him struggle to stay on the court over – the last few years come regular season, but of course he's always been healthy in the postseason, which is what matters most. But for the entirety of this year, he's been having a pretty clean bill of health. Uh, 
it's going to be tough for him to get into the top five, but I do think that it is achievable given the fact of we, we've seen his efficiency. We've seen just how dominant of a score he's been over these last couple of years. It's just going to be a matter of playing in that, that 50 to 60 game mark for the next few years. I do mm. anticipate KD is going to play for a good amount of years. Right now he's 35 years old, if I'm not mistaken. He'll probably play basketball till 39, 40, if I had to guess. Mm-hmm. So I think he has a strong chance to do it. Okay. I would say yeah. I yeah. think he could do it. Just as long as he's scoring at this high rate, you know, as long as he continues his efficient self, if he doesn't lose a step, mm-hmm. you know, I think he'll be fine. He'll be 36 in September. So, you know, he got this year. I think he'll play for a couple more years. You know, yeah. he's a high volume scorer. So, yeah, I think so. I think I'll, I'll gamble on him doing it. I think he will. Yeah. I think uh, Kevin Durant, he's already closing in on it. He's not that far off. And if he keeps playing at this <laughs> level, I think he's going to get there. I just kind of have a fear with, uh, I don't know where he's going to be. Like he could very well be in Phoenix next year Mm -hmm. or he could be somewhere else because I think with the Suns, the issue they're going to run into is that if what happens, what you guys expect to happen, if they get eliminated in the first round, Mm -hmm. if they do get eliminated in the first round, they understand there isn't much room for improvement with this team because we are strapped financially and we don't have any picks to really go out and do something. So they might be in a position where they can gamble on Beal being healthy next year Mm -hmm. and making a push next year, or they can say, Katie's still playing at an elite level. Maybe we can get something back for him Mm -hmm. for a team that wants to go out and trade for him. So keep Booker, or if you know if Katie leaves, then Booker might want to go too. So you get a lot back for Booker. Yeah. So you know they would have to make a decision on what they want their future to be because Katie's still playing at a high level and he's definitely going to be valuable if he were to ask a trade whenever he does, or if he does, you know, who never know. We never, we never know. Yeah. I just feel like the Suns are in a situation where, well, on average, um, Katie's is scoring a 1500 to 2000 points in a season. Uh, He's 133rd all time in games played. He's played much fewer games than everybody in the top 10. And the reason I highlighted this is because, you know, Katie for, for a lot of his career, you know, all be he joined the Warriors and stuff, all the scrutiny that comes his way mm-hmm. is absolutely justified. Mm-hmm. But I think what's not justified, and I think in a way what's kind of been rubbing me the wrong way, is people are forgetting how good of an individual player he is. I feel like people on Twitter, every time I see just people play with his name, but as an individual talent, yep. Kevin Durant is like that, and he has the possibility to be top five. I was going to maybe put in Kobe because Kobe's only a 1,000 points away from Michael Jordan. I don't know if he'll get to fourth all time, but if I had to put a, 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 my opinion on it, I think he gets into the top five all time in scoring. And I guess if if he's not in the top 10 all time for you guys and players, will him being a top five scorer move him into the top 10 for you? Would a, an accomplishment like that push him in? Uh, he, needs a, he needs a ring. He needs okay. a ring. N- Without Steph Curry. Okay. That's really what it would be for me to stamp him top 10. Because yeah. Steph got his top 10 stamp because of 2022. Yeah, moving up on the all-time scoring list doesn't really move me in terms of just moving you on the um, my all-time list. Mm-hmm. I think you would have to get like maybe another MVP, you know, or just another run. Finals MVP. Yeah, because the guys in front of him like are like Steph, you know, and then the Joker's coming, Giannis, you know, the guys mm-hmm. around yeah. him, okay. stuff like that. So, yeah, this, this one, this is just something to add to his, you know, mm-hmm. uh, achievements, something to add to his career you know this would be cool dope for him to talk about to his kids down the line and stuff like that but now nah, this doesn't move me you to wrap me? up this show what we're gonna do is that we're gonna give our mvp candidate our number one guy the leading candidate okay we know we got s- some guys we got four guys that for real for real can be number one talk. more so three because you know one guy the the winning doesn't favor his argument so much <laughs> Talk about Anthony Edwards, right? I'm talking about Luca. <laughs> Luca. Oh. Yeah, because of the Mavericks interceding place. But, you know, he's playing at that type of level. Uh, JC, I'll start with you. You know, who is your MVP pick? 60 games into the season, damn near. Okay. Um, so I'm going to probably take a, a slightly different approach on this. Um, I don't know how people will take this, but honestly, it's, it's how I feel. Uh, I think he deserves credit. So. My MVP so far this season is, is in my opinion, it's going to be Giannis. I have Giannis winning MVP. Okay, uh, I like he's, that. he's averaging 31 points, 11 rebounds, six and a half assists. Um, if people haven't been paying attention, Giannis is entering a territory in which he is turning into an elite passer. This is the highest assist per game he's averaged um, in his career. He's gone up from potential assists from 15 to 17 this year. Uh, 
I mean, pardon me, 11 to 13 this year. We've he's we've seen a noticeable improvement in his assists. Uh, he's this the month of uh, January till from January till now he's almost averaging close to eight and a half assists per game. Um, the Bucks have a chance to capture the second seed. They're right now yep. they're 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 tied with Cleveland right now. I think they're not going to get one because Boston's eight games ahead of everybody. No but they mm-hmm. have Milwaukee has a chance to get the number two seed. Um, and you know just. All the turmoil that kind of Giannis created with the Adrian Griffin firing or whatever, whatever the case may be, certain roster constructions. What Giannis has not disappointed in is his level of play, especially on both sides of the floor. Uh, we already know how elite Giannis is as, as a Rome defender. Uh, he can he can provide primary rim protection when it's needed. He's a very good secondary rim protector. Um, the value he adds on both sides of the of the court, uh, defensively, offensively, they can't be overlooked. They can't be overstated. So, um, yeah, Giannis, just because Bless of the you. turmoil, Thank how much he's improved as a passer, Bless he's scoring 31, 11, and 6. Uh, I I think that, you know, he has a legit case to win MVP. And if I had a, like, if I could, you know, like, sign in a ballot, it would be Giannis for MVP this year. Taking a different approach I like for that everybody. Answer. I think Giannis for MVP is fine. Um, really, this race is tight. Jokic, two-time MVP. Giannis, two-time MVP. Giannis has won two MVPs in the past before. And this year, I think it's his best offensive season by far. I think this year he's been the most impressive on offense since Doc Rivers has arrived, or post-All-Star break, I should say. They're 5-0. Hasn't been the greatest teams, but the win against Minnesota was impressive. Uh, And, you know, they've been dominating teams on this five-game win streak. So I like Giannis as a pick, but my pick is SGA. I think SGA right now would be my leading MVP candidate, and that's with all due respect to Luka, Giannis, and Jokic. But SGA this year, 31-6-7, 65% true shooting percentage, 67% at the rim, 50% on mid-ranges, 39% from three, 88% from the free throw line, 3.7 deflections a game, 94th percentile, averaging 2.1 steals, and 0.9 blocks per game. So two steals and a block, damn near. He's averaging three stocks a game along with his scoring and efficiency. This is one of the best guard seasons that I've seen. You know, the other one in recent memory is James Harden when he won MVP. SGA, all the box num- box score numbers speak to his case. The advanced numbers, second in EPM, first in estimated wins added, third in PER. All the advanced numbers help out his case. But I think what helps out his case more so than what Giannis or Jokic have is the fact that OKC coming into the season was the second youngest team in the league. You know, if OKC had made a leap this year, I wouldn't have been shocked, but I wouldn't have thought it would be this high. You know, here, Drew, you can handle that. I thought if they make a leap, OKC goes from a play-in to a top six seed lock and probably be the sixth, fifth seed somewhere around there. For them to be second in the West... And they could very well still cement themselves as the best team in the Western Conference. They could get first place. The only veteran here that you look to that's been here all year has been SGA. I just feel like SGA has the best case. He's not the loudest. He's not. He doesn't have the personality of Anthony Edwards. So I don't think that from a narrative standpoint, he's helping his case so much. Because if this was Anthony Edwards with these numbers, with the winning, I think Edwards would be the runaway favorite MVP right now but because SGA is more laid back he doesn't have the type of personality I feel like he doesn't kind of advocate for himself as much he's kind of going under the radar a little bit and last time I checked on like the sports books Jokic has negative odds to win the MVP which means they think he's favored Mm -hmm. by a wide margin SGA last time I checked was plus 230 that could have changed and I feel like that's kind of a steal because if (laughs) OKC finishes with the best seed in the West or even second with these numbers still, I think SGA is going to win MVP. What he doesn't have is the godly performances. He doesn't have the Giannis 48 and 16 games. He doesn't have the Luka 70 point games. SGA is very consistent. 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31. exactly. That's the meme that's going around. He's very consistent, very steady. SGA, we need 40. <laughs> Score the most 31 point games yeah. in the season. But he, doesn't, but he doesn't have the gaudy <clears throat> 50 point games. SGA goes over 50. So he probably doesn't have the, the, uh, 
monumental MVP performances that other guys have had in the past or that have this year, and that could hurt his case. But for right now, for what he's done, I think I've been most impressed with him, and I think he'd be my MVP. Now, to shock the world, my MVP, Luka Doncic. To shock the world. And this is how I get my name out of the Luka Doncic hater club. Uh, He has been otherworldly. Uh, For the idea that... I look at the Dallas Mavericks, and this is genuinely a team that does not overly impress me. I think they made some great moves at the trade deadline. You guys know my opinion on Kyrie Irving. He's one of my favorite players all time. Uh, but the uh, the reality of the case is it all begins and ends with Luka Doncic. Every time you hear my friend over here talk about the Dallas Mavericks, his immediate response is, well, it's Luka. And I understand that sometimes I may hate to hear that, but the reality of the, the fact is he has been the heart and soul of this offense. The defensive side of the ball, we understand he could get better at that show, a little bit more effort. Uh, But offensively, you could argue there's nobody on his level. The only one that comes to mind that I pay the respect is Nikola Jokic because of the sheer size, the impact that he has down low, his ability to also stretch, and of course his playmaking abilities. But Luke is legitimately one of the game's best passers uh, that I think we've ever seen. Honestly, he just has a certain flash to him. He always sees the court. It just seems like every pass he can make on the basketball court. And what's impressed me the most with Luka this season, more than anything else, has been the improvement to his three-point shot. The fact that he's taking almost he's taking more than 10 threes a game and he's shooting almost 38% from three. It it speaks to his work ethic and his continuous growth as an offensive player. I think it'll be great to see him start to transition more so carrying to the defensive side of the ball inevitably in his career because you understand if he wants to reach the mountaintop, we need to see him really care about the defensive side. But right now, where it stands, without Luka Doncic, it's the truth. The Mavericks would be one of the worst teams in the league. I, I do firmly believe that. And with without Luka, uh, we, we, we don't care about the Dallas Mavericks. But with him, we're talking about them as potentially a dark horse team to go win the NBA Finals. But the, st- the sheer statistics, his gravity on a basketball court, it's second to none. The only rivals right now, Nikola Jokic. Since the NBA merger in 1976 and 77, only eight players have won MVP for a team seated outside of the top two in the conference. No player has won an MVP for a, t- a team seated seventh or worse. And only three players, the Joker, Westbrook, Malone, I am assuming that is Moses, but I don't mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. have won MVP for a team that finished as the number six seed in its conference. Yep. So, so two of those MVPs are in the last five, the six MVP, years. Yeah. Yeah. Two of them are historic. Luca is on some historic triple shit. Double. Triple double, and then the Joker triple, triple double for a center. So, historically, since the merger, Luca winning MVP seems like a pipe dream, you know. But I think we could come to understand that with his team being depleted so much and him having little to no help for the majority of the season, him putting up some insane numbers, I think Luca may get the you know the bump up. But historically speaking, it's it's a tough thing, you know. And I think oh, this is the, this is another one winning. Uh, the, the last three MVP winners have come from teams seated third, sixth, and third. So it's tough. You know, and I think for me, all, every guy you just named, Giannis, Luca, SGA, they all have a case. The Joker also has a case. I wanna I wanna I wanna say this. I think MB would have won this award if he no, was healthy. Like, down, I think sure, he was sure, going, down, he was on sure. his way to walk to another MVP, a back to back. If I'm not mistaken, he won last year, right? He did. Yes, he did. Yeah. So he would have walked as a back to back MVP. Easily. He was just on some insane shit. His playmaking. Uh, that's really what improved stood out. Him. I think he, before he went down, he just had the seventy yeah, ball. Fast. So yeah, yeah he <laughs> just gave Wemby the seventy, yeah. So um <laughs> it's actually a stat about that too. Guys who lead the league in story, it doesn't really matter too much in MVP. Mm. Um for me, though, I'm going to side with Joel. I think SG is the MVP. Now, I think we had a conversation He's about He's got to get his way back in, too, Joel. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not moved about that once again. Um, <laughs> I think we had a conversation about it before, and I think I had SGA, and I, I think I want to keep the same energy because I do think... You know, plus they're, they're, they drop off a, t- a whopping 10 points when he's off the court in terms of just offense. But what's, a lot of things what Joel mentioned, of course the narrative makes sense, but just he's been the best two-way guard in the league, like – consistently throughout this year sure. you know the fact that he's been able to maintain that defensive efficiency while also being an offensive machine and this is not just three balls these are just these are mid-range wiggle your way to the basket pick and roll work like this dude is truly uh like a finesse of the ball like he's just different in inside the arc like there's nothing you can do with him so uh, for me 
SGA would be my MVP. You know, I, I don't want to rattle off the same things Joel kind of said. You know, I just think the way they're leading, you know, they're tied for the one seed in the West. They are pretty young as a team also. But, of course, I think SGA averaging 31 points per game, you know, being a defensive pest, you know, being an offensive engine for his team, you know, and not really having a consistent – not let me not say consistent, not really having a veteran secondary score. Like the next guy is J-Dub. The next guy is Chet. He's kind of the – like you mentioned, he's kind of the vet and the leader of this team, and he's leading him in ways that you couldn't even see it coming. So for me, I think SGA is also my MVP. I would love for him to win it. That'd be dope. You know, I would like to see somebody else win it for sure. Luca, if he wins it, that'd be dope too. We get a different winner. Um, but for me – as long as SGA continues continues this pace, you know he, he they had an impressive win against the Clippers, yeah. and they continue that throughout the year. I think SGA will get MVP. Now we talked about uh, the Celtics earlier, and Hoop Venue just dropped this tweet: Every team in NBA history to have the number one offense while having a top three defense. The twenty four Celtics this year, the seventeen Warriors, the ninety six Bulls, the seventy four Bucks, the seventy two Lakers, the seventy one Bucks, and the sixty seven Sixers. I'm assuming. So we're talking about the, the Celtics right now are on trajectory to being an all-time great team, and what they're doing right now in the regular season is all-time great stuff. It's got it's got to show. So, so I got a, I got I got a uh, random question before yeah. we leave. You got an icebreaker over there? Is that an icebreaker? It's empty. Fuck. Yeah. Would have killed for one. Before we leave, let's take out the old guys. So LeBron, Harden KD. for you. Mm -hmm. No, just your favorites. Oh, okay. So LeBron for you, Harden for you. I don't even know if you're still a Harden guy, but Harden for you. Uh, for me, Steph and PG, you take them out. Who's your five favorite players in the league right now? So essentially, 30 and under. I can't say AD. He's 30 and under. So right, essentially, hot. you know, the, the prime guys are the young yeah, guys. I can't say Kawhi. All right. Uh, mine are pretty simple. Yeah, all the old heads, get them out of there. Uh, AD most definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I will still say Zion. Hmm. Mm. Five is it gets tough. Are you looking up five favorite players? No, I already have like my three. Oh, yeah, you looking up two more? Yeah, pretty much <laughs> just looking at names, really. Hmm, I love Lamelo. Last two, Kyrie Irving. Mm. Even though he's older than thirty, actually now I don't think so. Is he? Yeah, he is. He's up there now. He'll be fine. He's uh, thirty-one. Yeah, he is. Oh, get him off. Um, damn, Kyrie. Yeah, he's old, man. Been playing for a while. Yeah. He's old. Do you have your five? I think I do. I think I do too. Yeah, I think I do. Are you gonna give your five or no? I was waiting uh, for the finish. Okay, I'll go I'll go Giannis and I'll go Jalen Brown. Okay. Jalen Brown is nasty. I love Jalen Brown. I've been a rider. <laughs> Jalen Brown is nasty. Oh <laughs> man. no, okay. Um Why for do me. That? <laughs> this guy owns a oh. Julius Randle jersey. Ah, That's oh my, my goodness. He's on he plays on my team. Really? What? He plays on the Mavericks? He plays on the Knicks. Oh, oh shit. Interesting. Forgot. All right. So my fair players, uh Luka Doncic, Anthony Edwards, one two, one A, one B really don't matter. Tyree Tyler Burton, especially in the months of October, November, definitely one of my favorite players. Um You're not a fan now? That's what you're saying. No, I am. Oh. I said especially. Oh, I said okay. especially in those months. Um SGA is up there. Uh number five. Over Sangoon is shocking. Sangoon is there. I thought about it. Um number five. Jalen Brunson. And then honorable mention for me, I find myself tuning into them to see if he's playing mm -hmm. or not often is Brandon Miller. He didn't play last night against Philly. I feel like we can't say Victor because then we're all bandwagon. I wouldn't be. A, I'm not a fan of Victor. He's like pretty awesome. Fan. No, he's like, I like watching him play, but I'm, I wouldn't consider him like, a, like uh -huh. one of my favorites. What the fuck is this? He's, I would go. Um, no Sabonis? No. Yeah, that was shocking. So bonus is my stamp of knowing basketball. Ah, okay, okay. So I'll always love and appreciate him in that regard. Okay. I would have went to bonus with JB. Nah, JB's my dog. I love Jalen Brown. Mine's would be uh, Cade. Think about Jalen Brown's ascension. It's been a cool story. Came from the not like he's oh, actually really smart. I, I bet. Yeah, he's like uh, he had a, he taught a class or he spoke at a class at Harvard, and uh, he's like his, I was reading you know them tweets that be like. You didn't know this about this NBA player, and they tell yeah. you all the yeah. I was reading up he, on Jalen. He went Brown. from like a subpar number three overall pick to being All NBA. He's amazing. Subpar, subpar what? Subpar number three overall pick. Oh, I mean, your top three pick, you kind of. You should to be, be great. A, Agreed. Yeah. That's what I. That's exactly my point. He said subpar, kind of called me. Uh, he just developed. Yeah, subpar. No, he was raw. He was raw. He was raw. He was raw. He went three for a reason. I know, mm -hmm. but he kind of started his like career. A, doesn't sound like eh. that big of a story to me. What do you mean? 
Sounds like a regular top three pick story. You think so? Yeah, top regular three pick, top three pick turns into an All NBA. I mean, you know, the thing you know is, the, be? the number three pick really just always <laughs> yeah, makes like, bangers. If RJ Barrett were to turn into like an All NBA player from this point forward, mm-hmm. I would be shocked. That's a better story, and that yeah. would be like, oh my god, that's like a <laughs> wow, that's, that's a story. Insane but Jalen Brown, I went from like twelve points per game to twenty eight. All NBA player. No, That's facts. Cool. It was just the opportunity, though, because I feel like very early on, he didn't yeah, have an RJ opportunity. RJ had the opportunity. Yeah, RJ always had the green light. He was just ass. Yeah, Damn. who's your fault? Um, he was just ass. Cade, <laughs> Cade, SGA, DG, um, Eamon. Amen Thompson, a rookie in there. Yeah, you know, he's... You said Cade, SGA, Amen? Cade, no, Cade, oh, Cade DG... Darius Garland. SGA. He's holding on hope. Yeah. He's been hooping. He has. His, his eye's feeling better. Thank God. They, they broke his face, man. Uh, Amen. And then, um, damn, I'm trying to think of it. Oh, Kaminga. Fuck. Too doing? bad PG Tucker's older, man. Who's your five, JC? He sucks. Uh, PG Tucker so, sucks, I mean, bro. Cam Not Thomas. Yeah, it's probably Mikael Mikael Bridges. Cam like, Johnson. Like Donovan Mitchell. I've always been a fan of Donovan Mitchell since he's been drafted. I like uh John put you on. I love John Morant. I'll put you on. I'll put you on Ja. You're a liar. Yeah. No, we always go. <laughs> Why do you, yeah, but you always lie. Nah, it's because it's... I, t- I told him I was like, yo, this kid from Murray State is gonna be nice. And he was like, he was like on some like he's like, oh, I'm gonna look him up. And he looked him up. Oh god. You put me on, he put me on Don though. Damn, uh, get him put on to Ja. Ant-Man. He's so nasty. Ant-Man. I like Ant-Man, SGA, and then a the last one, I like Luca. Ja's an honorable mention for me. I love Ja. That's my dog. That's my guy. Love Ja. And that's going to do it for this episode of the Pick Aside Pocket, episode 358. You guys can follow us on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod, on Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.